Dead man walking out the catacombs Which girl staring out the window I don't wanna hear that you seen a ghost I don't wanna know, I don't wanna know I just wanna live till I gotta go home I just wanna live till I gotta go home I cuss the wheel What's up everyone? Welcome to a new podcast episode. Today's episode features my two best friends, Bradley and Alex. Uh, I've been close with these guys ever since college, and we've had multiple podcasts together, and I just really always enjoy talking to them. Um, So I hope you guys enjoy this as well. I will say this podcast is three hours long, or at least nearly that amount of time. Um, It's a marathon of an episode, so if you need to listen to this episode in multiple different sittings, um, I'd say do whatever it takes. Please take your time, because I think this is one of the more important episodes that I've ever recorded. Um, I think the vulnerability that comes through in this episode is it's very important to me and I think this podcast episode keeps getting better and better as it goes along so for the first hour um, the conversation is somewhat stagnant but necessary to get into deeper levels of conversation So we came into the podcast, the three of us, not really having any specific agenda or any plan at all. We just wanted to talk and catch up. And I think that led to some disagreements and some some unskillful communication. But I think it's important to put that on display for everyone to see and to show this as kind of a a raw product and a learning process for everyone. And after Alex leaves the podcast, it's just me and Bradley at that point for the next two hours. And at that point, I think we really start getting into some deep, vulnerable stuff that is, I feel a bit uncomfortable sharing, but at the same time, um, I think it's very valuable and I think self-expression I feel is important to me and is important to Bradley at the moment. So we're putting it out there because we think it'll be useful to you. So I hope this is useful um, to you and I look forward to hearing what you think. So without further ado, enjoy the podcast featuring my good friends, Bradley and Alex. Can you? <laughs> Got him. Got him. So everyone can see everyone? Yeah, you're in my sights. <laughs> Locked in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, y'all ready to start this up? Go ahead. All right, boys, welcome to the podcast. It's good to have you guys back. It's good to see you in the flesh. Even though we are long distance, it feels good to, to connect and to finally see y'all. So, my question to you guys is, uh, how are y'all doing? Dude, doing fantastic. Um, great to be here. This is, um, I've, I've been wanting to do something like this with y'all for, um, it, it's, it's been, I feel like it's been kind of out there. We've, we've been wanting to connect like this and it's good. Um, yeah, just good during these, these, uh, these different times, these COVID times, it seems like a lot of people are transitioning to, you know, the at home work environment. So, you know, like it's like almost every single, whatever industry you're in, you're having to make some sort of adjustments, you know? So I think it's time for change for me at least. Yeah, man. Uh, talk to us about this change. 
I mean, for both of y'all, I feel like y'all have been going through a lot of change these days. Um, yeah, if, there's a lot of sound coming through, I think, on one of y'all's end, but uh, I think we can get past that. But uh, yeah, I'm looking to hear from you guys in terms of updates. Like, what do y'all, where, where has y'all's head been at? What have you been feeling these days? Well, I, I'm here in Ecuador and not dealing with really any of the bullshit that y'all are probably dealing with in the states. Um, so I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm still, you know, the same piss drinking, meditating guy. Uh, just yeah, it's a it's a challenging question to answer, actually. I don't know. I'm just I, I was, to tell the I, truth, was ta- I was yeah, I was talking to Bradley uh, last week and um, you know, I feel like this um, this time it's like you kind of sink deeper into the the habits and um, kind of the path you're on in my experience. Like I you know, I think if you're like going into this lockdown, if you were on like a super uh, fitness, like you're on a super fitness craze, you're like working out a lot. I think this lockdown almost would give you an opportunity to accelerate that, you know, more at home time, just like, okay, I'm going to, you know, even go crazier with, you know, whatever project I'm working on. And I think it could also work um, to like the opposite of that. Like, okay, I'm, I'm drinking right now and like this lockdown is just like accelerating that for me, you know, and it's like, I'm forced to be, you know, like, like in what I'm doing, I'm forced to be in the kind of like little routine I'm doing. And, um, so, so for me, I feel like it's kind of been ebbs and flows of that. So just like, kind of like trying to stay on the more, um, healthy alkaline productive side um and so for me it's just kind of like toggling in between okay what am i am i like um am i crashing now i'm becoming lazy and eating shit or am i like um you know feeling good helping people um so yeah i i think this this at least in america this lockdown has definitely uh magnified people's uh, habits, if that makes sense. Totally. Bro, you're, you're so fit, bro. I see it. I see it. No. Um, no, you are. You're fit. Yeah, bro. you are, bro. You're fit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's amazing with how, like, fit I consider myself as, as, like, how fit I consider myself, like, um, how bad I can feel if I go on a bad street, like how much I won't want to do any activity if I'm feeling like shit, you know what I mean? So I, I really really feel like in in that sense, it's the, it's the, the path you're on. Like, you, you know, you'd rather, you'd rather hang out with some homeless man who's like trying to better himself than some like, um, you know, rich kid millionaire who's you know about to just crumble and burn right i think so what you're saying is it's that this time in particular is giving people a chance to go deeper into their patterns and at the same time there's a danger of going deeper into patterns that they don't want to and i can resonate with that i find it when i'm in when I'm in a great pattern, something that I like, I'm just, I'm smoothly sailing along in that pattern. However, it just, sometimes just a little, a little, um, a little chink in the chain can, can throw me off. And, and I find it sometimes hard to, to get back onto a pattern, um, that I want to get back onto when I fall into a bad pattern. For sure, Bradley. Do you care to share an example? You with know, us? I'm quite. 
Yeah, you know, I'm questioning. Well, firstly, I'm questioning this whole bad, good bullshit. Um, you know, it's. I, I'm starting to see of it more as a, an arbitrary thing. So in my own life, I was doing. I was on a great juice fast for like two months, and and then after that, I just started eating a little differently. And before I knew it, I was eating things that I hadn't eaten in a long time and stuffing my face, really binging hard on some things. And yeah, I was scared to face something. And I, I think that what I was scared to face was that I am not my idealized version of myself. That, that who I am right now is not the ideal version. That there are other parts of me that that needs some accepting and um, yeah, embracing and expressing. Mm -hmm. I like where this is going. So I want to dive into that because I've I've can like I've been through similar things and continue to go through those feelings or mindsets that you know we're all. I guess, like, going back and forth and back and forth between wanting to be a better person and, like, striving for some sort of ideal state, striving for perfection, and then setting those arbitrary um, characteristics, I guess, in my mind of someone I should be. And really, it's like what I've found by doing that is that I'm actually exactly what you're saying, Bradley. Like I'm not loving who I am now. Like there's something I have some idea in my mind that I need to fix myself and that if I adopt certain behaviors and certain patterns, then I can become rectified and fixed and ideal. And like, who am I doing this for? Am I doing it for me? Am I doing it for other people? And so this has been, you know, I guess a journey that's unfolding. And I think perhaps both of you guys can relate to that. For sure. I, I think that feeling is very, in, in my mind, in my life, very uh, motivating. Kind of like, um, um, I, I wouldn't call it self-hatred, but um, just like, you know, it's just not, not being uh, pleased with, what I'm doing, I, I, I think that's, it's, it's good for me. It, it puts me in a place and it like, um, yeah, it, it inspires me to want to do things. Yeah. But are you just oscillating from one side of the pendulum to the other? You know, you go through the shitty habit or for me, I go through the shitty habit and then that inspires me. Oh, I get to get to the other side of the pendulum where I feel good about myself. And then I get to the other side of the pendulum and it's like, oh, okay, cool. This is nice. And then I fuck off and go back to the other side of the pendulum <laughs> and then get re-inspired and go back to the other side. Mm -hmm. And, and now for me, I'm, I'm just, I'm much more accepting of those parts of me that are on the side of the pendulum that I don't want to be on. So the parts of me, mm -hmm. I know I'm selfish. I know I'm petty. I know that I'm I'm an asshole at times. I know I can be mean. I know I'm jealous. I know I'm I know I'm gluttonous. I know that I'm all of these things that don't actually fit into my idealized version. Um, but I have this feeling that I'm never going to get to my idealized version in a sustainable way if if I'm not accepting those parts of me that don't fit with it because that's. That's truth telling for me, 101. That, okay, this is who I think I am, this idealized version. And, but that's not the truth. I'm just lying to myself <laughs> because right now I feel like a piece of shit. I feel like just slapping you in the face because you said something stupid. I feel angry about some little thing. You know, I'm, I'm full of it. Yeah. And I think, um, I think there's a difference between like kind of like the daily habits, you know, fixing your daily habit and um, 
wanting to achieve a goal or something. Because I, I think, um, yeah, for, for me, I think fixing my daily habits, I think that has to align with the goals I want to have, what I want to achieve. And I think that's if when I think that's part of the, the, the shame or guilt, like if I start to fall off, whether it's drugs or food or whatever, like I, I feel like kind of that um, you feel bad about yourself because it's like you're not I'm you know, I'm not doing as much as I could to, you know, a, accomplish what I want to accomplish. Um, and. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely agree that all, all the, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, we go through cycles and, um, you know, the self guilt, self shame, it, it's, it's definitely like, it's, it's, you shouldn't be feeling that all the time at all. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm from the perspective that um, I think it's telling me something kind of, and um, I think I'm from the perspective that. I should be continually working to better myself and not, um, not, not saying, not saying that this is what you were saying, but not just to like always be accepting of my faults. I, I think there's, there's a, I think there's a time and a place for me to be self-critical and to like, and push myself to do better. Cause yeah, that's, that's all. I'm questioning the whole the whole version, the whole idealized version, remaining attached to that, having an idea of of what I want to be, um, I think might be bullshit. Well, um, I mean, yeah, if you don't want to do anything, if you don't want to accomplish anything or like, um, you know, if you don't. Well, have so let me goals, jump in here. Because I think, but if, but if you want to achieve, if you want to achieve something, like you have to have, it doesn't happen right away, right? And, and like, like this, you can't just like materialize things instantly. So there has to be steps in place. You have to be like on a, you know, a, a trajectory somewhere. You know. Well, I agree. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I agree as well with both of you guys, and I see, I think Surprise. both of these perspectives, <laughs> right? Well, I think I think both of these perspectives can exist, and I actually resonate more with kind of what Bradley is saying in that perspective, because the way the way I see it, yeah, you you win, you win this time with me, whatever that means. But I mean, the way I see it, and I think what Bradley's pointing to is that there really is no future moment. There is just only now. And so like if I'm always aiming towards the future and trying to, and living in my mind and deceiving myself that I'm this like really nice person who um, doesn't like, is not idealized yet or who thinks things that, you know, I don't want to be thinking or who does things that I don't want to be doing, that that idealized self is an illusion, like attempting to reach some future state of, okay, now I'll be happy, then that like, that's never going to occur. And so it's, and yet it's paradoxical because you do have to or I do have to, or the way that my experience has unfolded so far is that I have been rewarded from adopting quote unquote, like good habits and doing my best to like love myself, I guess, in the moments where I'm faltering and just continuing forward as best as I can. But it's about the journey, right? It's about like enjoying the journey. You know, so we're all on a different path journey somewhere. Your journey could be to just be more present. I, I just want to have better thought cycles mm -hmm. and be more present. That could be my journey. And so, um, but we're all like having to go somewhere. We're all on the way. Like this is, this, this, this life is like an act. It's a play. We're in process of doing something. 
and so I don't know it, it in, the, in that sense it's like you might as well like aim to do what you want to do aim to accomplish what you think will be good for people and you know do your best to do that and I think if you're if you're falling off from from that what what you feel like your um your bet your best uh gift to others is then i i think it's probably good to like um feel some sort of self guilt or shame to to get you back on that track that's my perspective because we're all on a journey you know we're, we're all we're all on a path you know yeah man yeah it's just like i don't know I mean, I guess we like the way I'm operating currently, it's like I, I have an intention and I kind of set that like, OK, I want to be I want to be safe. You know, I want to feel loved. I want to do good things for my family and for the world, you know, kind of like the these like goals, I guess, or these intentions. And then, but that's like all I can do, I guess. And I guess in my experience, I'm just seeing how little control I have over myself and over what's happening in the world. And that like, what's benefiting me psychologically is surrendering to you know the present to my intention to the world i guess um yeah because because it sounds like y'all y'all are more on the journey of not not to say like y'all like group but of um finding that equanimity you know finding that uh awareness um piece you know deciphering like two sides two th the different polarities you know being able to like maintain that um that calmness and kind of like ex like eh, experience and that i i think that's a that's a beautiful uh, well so i actually don't think that I actually don't think that's what my path is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I appreciate like I think at one point that was my path. Like I was trying to get to that ideal state of equanimity and enlightenment or whatever you want to call it. Well, there's and no since ideal then, state as we've been saying. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. And so for me things have shifted in the sense that you know, whatever arises, I'm going with it. Like I don't you know, just go in free flow kind of experience. Um, and I think that's what I mean by surrender, just whatever arises, like I'm wanting to express myself and connect with other people in that way and not trying to like put on some facade or put on some thing where, oh no, I'm just trying to be like monkish and just be peaceful and calm and try and unite everyone. And yeah, I do have a, like tendencies to unite, I feel like, and, and to some degree, but I, I just think that's not who I am, just with this one state and tr always trying to strive to that one state. So there's like no discrimination, there's zero discrimination between like feelings that come up. If an anger comes up in my life, I'm going to go with that. If this comes up, I'm always going to go up along with whatever whatever feeling comes up, I'm gonna go into a hundred percent. Is that the idea? There's no discrimination as far as like what you're feeling. I guess for me, um, I see where you're getting to, and I think you're right about like I seem to. There is some desire for me to want to be able to control myself when anger arises, let's say. But I'm also, uh, and I'm also questioning to what degree I have control over that. And 
to what degree it's healthy to suppress the anger or to suppress negative emotions versus expressing them and playing with that and playing with that and see where that gets me and learning through that experiment. Okay. I, I just I just poke you at that, David, because you you say that. You say I'm just like free flowing, I'm just like go along. But like everything that comes out is very calm, equanimous, positive. And so it's it's just like <laughs> you know like 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 very very like like and so it, I'm just trying to like dig get a little better understanding. You know what I'm saying? D- just tell him what you think of him. Damn it! <laughs> I, that, that, that's, just, that, I, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like I er, like like what, what I see from your posts. Like how I like our conversation. They're very polite calm like constructive but 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 then but then when you're saying like what i'm trying to achieve you're like i'm just like i'm 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 going with anything you know i'm go i just want to go with any emotion that comes up and so it's just a little confusing on that end Mm. what are you wanting him to express what emotions are you wanting to see david express i i'm saying if you're gonna talk like that let's start to see more passion more anger more <gasps> more polarization taking a side on things you, you know what i'm saying and not not saying you should be doing that or people should be doing that i but um that that that's like that's what you're saying you know okay i see what you're saying you're and, wanting and, to, and maybe uh, you are more um like outside of like social media or on podcasts you are becoming more um and I'm like uh, passionate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, man. I, I've. Go ahead. I I just don't feel like I'm a very. I am I am wanting to be more expressive, but I also question. I don't know. I'm just I I. <laughs> Dude, it's a big story to give up, man. The, yeah. Uh, the, the story that I am liked and people are pleased with my with my expressions and my presence and <laughs> and I when I when I stupidly or courageously express my anger and tell a motherfucker that you know to shut up or whatever, I'm I'm risking not just his displeasure or this person's displeasure. But I'm risking, more importantly, I'm risking the identity of being the liked guy, being the nice guy, <laughs> being the good, the good moralism, the good moralistic man that I am. And I, where I am in my journey, I'm just growing so tired of being the good guy. And, <laughs> whew, and I feel great letting that story go and... And experimenting with with uh, different emotions arising, and just noticing them, and then just expressing them. So if I notice a thought that wow, I really want this guy to shut the fuck up. I think this guy's just saying nothing. Then then I can notice that, and then I can express it. And just by doing that over and over, it, it was like the story I was telling myself, the idealized version of myself. And, and anything that went against that story was like jumping in the deep water without knowing how to swim. And now, like slowly, I'm, I'm starting to doggy paddle and realize, oh, this isn't so bad. It's kind of nice being in the water. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, is, that, that conversation to me, I'm fascinated with that conversation, especially amongst us three. And... Like where where we think our bullshit lies. What what story do we think the other people are holding on to, and what story are we holding on to, and how to how to come to acceptance that we're holding on to that story, and how to open the gates of of our real story um, that's wanting to push through, 
and being suppressed by the weight of our idealized version. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So should we go around uh, go around the horn here and uh, bring up the stories <laughs> that we think are that each of us need to be letting go of? Is this what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I'm saying what story do you think this per- I'm I'm curious what story you think I'm operating on. I'm also keen to share what story I think you're operating on. And I'm also curious to hear if you have any resentments towards me that have been gurgling from way back when or whatever. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we did this on uh, that, that the podcast a few years ago, too, which was... Uh, I enjoyed that one. Um, but yeah, but... Mm-hmm. but, but before, if I can just say, before we uh, get into it, um, that what what what, what, Bra- what Bradley what Bradley was saying that that really resonated with me that I've been I feel like becoming better at lately is just saying no, you know, mm. just getting getting more assert. Just nothing feels better than a good no, you know. It's- no, bitch, no. <laughs> yeah i mean and it's like you know just like it's like being able to just be quiet sometimes and just say no to things whether it's you know it just engaging in a conversation as simple as that like no i'm i i don't i don't have time for this right now you know and it's like because because yeah, everyone wants you everyone almost expects you to be like nice and politically correct like and like no and it's dude like, you expect yourself to be nice and politically correct yes yeah Don't blame yeah. it on me yeah you're right i'm not i'm not blaming on you but it as as a culture as an american culture it's become commonplace to to become politically correct to it's become commonplace to to instead of just saying no i don't want to go to this place with you you have to like make up some lie <sighs> You know what I'm saying? He told me no. <laughs> so um, that that's that's kind of what I was thinking about what you were saying is just you know, like giving up the whole nice guy um, persona and um, yeah, asserting yourself better. And that that doesn't mean you like you can't be a good person, you know, and help people out. You're you're actually you're actually setting yourself to do that more. I think if if you prioritize your your time and energy like that yeah man i agree if i'm if i'm acting nicely because of the story i'm operating on i'm acting out of some sort of sense of duty or guilt or shame oh man that's so fucking tiring and whereas if i don't if i really don't want to do the damn thing and i say no to doing the damn thing and then an opportunity arises where I actually do want to help, and but I'm doing it out of my own volition, my own compassion arising spontaneously, not out of some sense of duty that, well, I'm a good person, so I should probably help this feller. It's like, right. dude, help yourself, man. I don't feel like fucking helping you right now. I've got my own goddamn life. What the hell? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's been resonating with me lately. Is like, I don't know. There's just such a call to action in the world these days about wanting to just help everyone else. Like, as if we have the keys to someone else's happiness and like purpose and um, feelings, feelings, contentments, like all these things. And the more I'm going in on myself the more i'm realizing oh no one can help me like for the longest time i i've been wanting a relationship and i still do to some extent like a a romantic relationship and once that started I, i was seeing a woman and once that started like actually getting more and more serious i was like starting to freak out because i was starting to realize like oh shit I could have this thing that I want, and yet I'm still not happy. What's the thing you want? Like, the chick? Yeah. Like okay. having a having a, a romantic partner in life. Like thinking this, telling myself this story that, okay, once I have a romantic partner, like I'm just so good. Like 
I'm coasting. There's nothing else to do. This person will solve all of my problems for me and give me what I want. And once I actually had that thing, it wasn't true. It was a big lie Mm -hmm. and everything broke down inside of me like, oh shit, that was false and no one can help me like no one can actually help me i'm alone i'm it's just me and like i'm just seeing in the world a lot of people projecting onto others this this desire to want to be helped and to want to want to feel loved, to want to feel safe, but like they don't know how to do it. They don't have the tools. They don't have the capacities. <laughs> they haven't been taught the right things, like educated. Um, and yeah, it's, it's frustrating because it's now become like what you're saying, Alex, it's become politically correct to virtue signal that, oh, I'm someone who helps other people. And it's like, I'm even questioning how much, how much can you help other people to actually liberate themselves and actually become someone who's like, feels good in their skin. And I'm seeing like, this is an internal game. So that's Mm -hmm. frustrating to me that I'm seeing that. Yeah, there's a lot there. Can we, can we, moving forward, can we do our best to, to use I statements and just speak from our own experience rather than our own interpretations of the world and what we see? I think we'll get a lot deeper if we can if we can start to focus more on our own experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just so think, what, what I think it's, it's sometimes good, but before, yeah, I think it's sometimes good to relate your own experiences to what you're seeing in the world. Cause, uh, we just, it's just because, like, how we started the conversation with kind of, like, the lockdowns and stuff, it's just, like, we live in such an interesting time that, like, these, like, political shit that's going on are having real impacts, you know, so. I, no, I, no, no. What? Let me let me clarify. I'm not yeah. I'm not saying we don't talk about anything going on in the world. I'm just more interested and think we'll go deeper is if we are talking about things in the world that we're talking about our experience in relation right. to it. Yeah. Not yeah. our mm. not our interpretations of what's happening. Yeah, for sure. That's wise. And are you saying that because I was getting frustrated <laughs> and I was projecting my frustrations onto other people when really like I'm just frustrated that I still think that, yeah, okay, that I still think that I can help other people and that I'm going to be some source of, like, their... (laughs) Yeah, dude, (laughs) yeah, the savior complex, you know? That's, like, the good guy story taken to its apex is that I can save the world. The White Um, Knights. Yeah, right. right. I, I was in I was in a group on Instagram the other day, and you know I'm in those those silly looms sometimes, and I feel so embarrassed posting about those looms at times. Um, but, but we were I'm in this group, and this chick says, uh, she says, oh I feel I feel weird about posting these looms because of all the the social justice reforms and uh, i don't know a bunch of shit going on in the states the the black lives matter the i'm sure there's other stuff going on too i said no nah, i think that's bullshit i think you're just afraid to post something <laughs> what your what people will think of you in, in light of all all these events and, and she made this long ass mess and i said you know good luck saving the world that was it <laughs> and, she, and then she left the <laughs> And she left the group, and and I I felt great (laughs) just saying what I thought, just saying what I thought, and and taking responsibility for what I thought. I didn't say you're afraid. I said I think you're afraid. This is this is I'm noticing this thought of mine happening about you, and I'm sharing it with you. 
I'm not yeah. saying this is the thing, but I'm noticing what's happening within me, and I'm and I'm taking chances more at expressing, and just I I think it's another layer of the vulnerability game. Um, you know, it was one thing for me to be vulnerable about some of these things that made me that made me seem weak about being afraid or or whatnot and now now it's a new level of vulnerability where there's fear of being strong there's fear that i have of being assertive there's fear i have of being dominant and angry and 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 now that's that's where i'm at right now is 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 playing with that dominant role being a decisive leader and taking charge even at the expense of others displeasure Mm. Why why do you think you're afraid of that? Because I have similar feelings as well. So yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I, I, I think it conflicts with again this very deep story of mine to be liked, to be a good boy. It's this this deep <laughs> layer of morality, you know, coming from the time when you know, I was meeting new adults and my mom or dad would say, you know, put it on your best face. And, you know, that's not how we act. We're, we're, we're polite family. We say, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you. And I'm realizing, whoa, those are actually just arbitrary nonsense to, to play this game of bullshit amongst all of us. And so we're all playing by the same bullshit rules. And there's a few of us that are like, well... This isn't that fun anymore. I'm wanting to play a new fucking game, and and no one else wants to play that game. And so I feel scared about playing that game. But every time I play it, I, I get the best feedback. People are inspired. They want to know more. They're listening to me in rapt attention. And and I feel great. I mean, I feel I get like definitely an ego boost big time. Yeah, I can resonate so, with that. <laughs> There's definitely a right way to do it, though. You know, like um, like you were saying with, with, with the with what, the. Why is there a right way? What's the right way? In, in my experience, um, I've definitely rubbed like escalated what could have been um, pr- the more constructive conversations and arguments by um, just purely just being on the attack, just like you know, you statements, oh, you think this, like, uh, like, you know, I, by nature, I like to talk shit. I like to kind of poke people's arguments. Um, and, and, you know, not saying that there's never a time and a place to do that, you know, to really get through to someone, but in, uh, you can definitely, uh, ruffle feathers more than they need to be by, by using that approach I've found. Right. So, okay. Here's something that's coming to me from both of you guys is that Bradley you're wanting to play a game okay you're wanting to play a game that's different from a game that everyone else is playing and in order to play that game you have to convince people to play it they're not just going to play it and you have to do that in a certain way um if that makes sense oh my hands up teacher I want to speak <laughs> yes Bradley <laughs> I wa- no, you, you didn't understand me correctly. I'm not saying, I think if, you, if someone's getting into a situation that they're ruffling feathers and taking it to a, a level that... Yeah, that was, I was purely talking about myself. Yeah, yeah, no, I know that. But what I'm saying is that that's not, ex- that's not what I'm saying when I say vulnerability. That, that, that to me is just an unskillful expression of that vulnerability. And what I mean by unskillful expression is is using old outdated tools like like projection and using words that do not uh, own responsibility and own projections own thoughts own feelings and i'm saying i'm wanting to play a game where i can skillfully articulate um that vulnerability and and use tools that take responsibility for what's going on with me and and i think the results are are um, even better because more people want to play the game with me, whereas the tools I was using before with projection and you this, you that, they this, they that, we this, we that, no one fucking wanted to play the game with me and just thought I was an asshole. 
and now people want to play the game and they might think I'm an asshole, but they're feeling something inside of them too, I think, because I feel more alive when I'm using these new tools and expressing vulnerably. So let's dive into that then. So where, what are the tools? What are these tools you're referring to that have allowed you to connect in this way with yourself? Which, uh, it's just taking responsibility for, for, for my experience and using words that reflect that responsibility. So not you know speaking more with i speaking more i think i feel um and th th those ways i find when i'm when people speak to me that way i'm much more responsive and willing to engage with them rather than when they say you know you you are acting mean or you know you, you didn't <laughs> think about me or whatever, just the, right. making these assumptions on reality um, without even second guessing. Anything. And, you know, that kind of person now is when they're when that person is acting that way. I, my role is now an adult. I'm, I'm acting with the child. And so what would an adult do when they are um doing doing something with the child you know they take control they learn to lead they learn to be assertive wait i've got some answers here that this motherfucker doesn't and even though this person might be my age or older or whatever it doesn't matter and you know i meet people that when i'm acting like a child and they say something like the adult the assertive adult the the in charge adult and damn i feel well that doesn't feel good i feel wow i really need to look at what the fuck I'm saying, um, so there's a place for adults is what I'm saying. And, and I'm seeing there's a bunch of children running around acting like adults. And now it's time for people to be adults. And I feel fortunate that I'm starting to grow up more and be that adult and wanting more, more adult interaction, uh, wanting more interaction with people that are also going through this, this fucking late ass adolescence. Whew. Yeah, I'm with you there, man. Yeah. Don't yeah, get very, old. Very late adolescence going on. <laughs> but uh hey, better late than never. And that's right. It feels good to finally like No, I feel good. There's nothing that feels good about it. It is just a thing. I feel good about this growth that I'm going through. Say it feels good. Yeah, it, it feels I, good. It feels I, good. No, I feel good, yep. motherfucker. <laughs> There's nothing good about it. Okay, well, it I, is just well, a, I feel like an inanimate thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm still talking about myself. I can, yeah, like it feels good inside of me. Like that's, and it. I, I have a. I could get philosophical. I could get philosophical too. Like, okay, why why do I have to be so attached to I? Like, what is the I? What is this? And so. Well, but anyway, I, I, but but what is it? What is it that feels good? I don't know. It, I there's don't a know. big question mark there, and I, so I'm like, okay, what the fuck do you mean by it uh, feels good? I I I think Bradley's 100% right in saying we need to talk about our own personal experience more. But I I think in in this case, I think like you can nitpick at it a little bit because I think it feels good is an expression when you, you're talking about me. Yeah, your like. I think it's good to pick your battles here. Like I'm, I'm clearly expressing. <laughs> Not very clearly to me, but I, I do understand what you're saying. And you're right. I, I do get zealous and I do pick some silly battles, um, especially nitpicking language. But I think those nitpicking languages point to something much deeper. It, it points to uh, something blocking us from taking responsibility for I feel good. Not it feels good. I feel good when I'm when I'm growing or whatever it is. And and so I'm just pointing at that. I'm just looking at the tip of the iceberg and saying, oh, look at that iceberg there. You want to go swimming underneath with me and see what's under it? But you're right. 
I'm I can be a nitpicking son of a bitch. You're right. Um, I hear both of you talking about talk about uh, vulnerability a lot, um, and I I totally understand the idea of like becoming more in a relationship or a conversation, becoming more open about <laughs> about your own experience. That, that dude, are you are you preparing us for your your alternate opinion <laughs> no, it, 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 this, is, this is this is this is totally a question i'm saying I, I i totally understand how it helps uh connect people together you know by by becoming by showing more of your true colors of being your authentic self um is is that always always the goal of every interaction is that always the is becoming more vulnerable like it, you know what I, is, you know what I'm saying? Is that the goal mm, of mm. the interaction of every? Or are there times where it's like, okay, we're just kind of, you know, we're we're just kind of like wasting, you know, feelings here, and we're not like a, like talking about what we need to be talking about. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's not well said, but just 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 a thought because I I hear the no, word, that's a good I, thought. I, I because coming up, uh, come up a lot as far right, as like, right. Well, what comes to mind is like, yes, there's like two. I mean, there's a. It's a. It's not just black and white. There's many shades of gray here. But like, yeah, there are more practical matters that we attend to in life, and so I'm not going to be like be like pouring my heart out to the person I'm ordering like a burger from at the burger joint. But it's like, <laughs> I think when I, when I'm having these types of conversations yeah, and yeah, I'm wanting to express clearly and accurately what it is, um, I'm feeling and yeah, I, I, but it's contextual as well. Like there, it's a time, there's a time and a place for it and you're not, and I'm, I know I'm not going to force anyone else to be vulnerable it's just like something that i read the situation i guess and then slowly start digging and well, expressing you, myself usually you you encourage it by by off in my experience when i like when i'm vulnerable about myself and i like share you know whatever something about myself usually it spurs that in in the other person it's it like kind of encourages them to you know be open with whatever yes do, do you have an example i'm curious to hear an example of where you might think it's not valuable to uh i uh, i can i can think a ton of examples you know yeah yeah no it's 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 easy isn't it um i think the point of being vulnerable though is that it anchors me in the present moment because it's what's happening within me right then and there. And it's changing too. Um, and it is interesting because I'm, I'm thinking your question through and, and when I'm really in that moment, I'm not thinking that that other person is not worth my vulnerability. It's when I'm, not in the moment when I think, oh, this is a, I'm not going to see this person again, whatever. But when I'm really in the moment, this is the person. This is my best friend. Whoever the fuck this is, the burger guy, whatever. This is my best friend. And maybe something does arrive. I mean, yeah, I don't know how I distinguish and discern what gets shared and what doesn't. But my experiment right now is to is to share more than than I have before and and see where that line is like oh okay maybe I went mm. too far on this or whatever um, but I I'm I'm tired of speculating about when's the right time to be vulnerable or not because usually the times that I'm scared most to be vulnerable and and damn dude I I can't help but think that this this idea of vulnerability looks soft and it looks weak and it looks diminutive. And, and I think it's so goddamn strong to be vulnerable. Uh, yeah. 
Well, I think it. I think it depends. I don't. I don't think. Okay, what does vulnerable mean? To show weakness. Is it? Okay. Is it no, no, no. Is it, like, is it always strong to show like your feelings and weakness? I. I don't think it's always that. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense logically to me. No, but what I'm saying is that vulnerability isn't about showing weaknesses. That has nothing to do with it. You can show weaknesses and be vulnerable, but it does. That's not all of vulnerability. Vulnerability to me is is learning to not just notice what's happening inside of me and outside, but to be able to express that what's happening inside and outside. And sometimes that part is fucking strong, and sometimes it's very weak and sad and fearful. And and I think and I. Th- and, and I think uh, I, I think I'm thinking that vulnerability is somehow weak. I'm still holding on to that story that it's weak. And now I'm, I'm discovering this this other part of vulnerability and that vulnerability is really just aligning myself with what I say and what I do with what's happening inside. And when there's a disconnect between what's happening inside and what I'm doing and saying outside, then I am not telling the truth. And when I'm not telling the truth, I'm not in the moment. And if I'm not in the moment, then I'm in fucking hell. And if I'm in fucking hell, then I'm in suffering unnecessarily. All right. So just the, like, just the definition of vulnerable is like susceptible to like physical attack or harm or like in need of special care. And I'm, I'm not like, I'm not trying to, I totally understand the idea of opening up and like, you know, that, that helps create a a bigger connection, but I'm just, I'm just trying to find the balance here. I'm just trying to find the balance here. Mm. And like, it, it, it does, it doesn't make sense to me at all. Logically that from like, I, that this is what I should be thinking in like my everyday conversations. How do I, how do I show this person? Like, more of like my I don't know it, it doesn't make it doesn't make okay. sense to me. okay let me say one example <laughs> let me just say one example here I can be vulnerable I'm being vulnerable when I tell you look dude I'm I'm afraid of of just changing this one eating pattern of mine I'm afraid of not having enough food I'm afraid of like not having, I'm afraid of scarcity. And so I, I just go and binge sometimes. Okay. And I think there's vulnerability to that. And, and there's also vulnerability when I'm with someone that is just yapping, yapping, yapping. And I tell them, dude, shut the fuck up. I think there's vulnerability in that too. And so I think there's just equal amounts of vulnerability between this, this softer, weaker side of me and the stronger, more assertive side. Okay, I, I think we're more talking, in, in my, I think we're more talking about being honest, being open and honest and transparent. Because to, to me, vulnerability means just like, just like trying to show someone your insecurities or weakness, which not, not saying you shouldn't do that, not saying you shouldn't do that, but why, why the fuck would I be trying to show the pizza man my like, like weird insecurities. Like why? Like well, it doesn't so help on a day to day. Let me hop in com- here. <laughs> like, I, I, I think we're getting you confused. Can. You can, you can make a deep connection with everyone, but I, Alex, I, just, I see what you're, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And I think we're getting hung up on language here. So I agree. I agree. The word vulnerable can mean different things depending on the context. And you can, Imagine what Bradley is trying to say here, I think, or what what the, the way I define vulnerability <laughs> is that is like you can be vulnerable and strong at the same time. So like putting yourself in harm's way is actually a vulnerable an act of vulnerability. So like if there's an aggressor and a child and I put myself in between those two things, then that, that's not being vulnerable that's protecting someone that's not being no okay dude dude well i'm not all right it sounds like what you're saying to me is that being vulnerable is sharing weaknesses and whatever to people and you don't want to share your weaknesses with the pizza man 
But I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying whatever's going on inside in that moment. So when okay. you're opening the door, that, that, that's oh, what I'm oh, when you're yeah, when you're opening the door to the pizza man, are you thinking about your fucking, you know, your binging weakness or whatever? And if you are, great, tell the motherfucker. But I, I, I bet you're just thinking, oh, I just want some pizza, dude. Thanks, give me the, you know what I mean? So it's not, your weaknesses are will arise to share in the right time. This okay, the same okay, that, that, that's helpful, that's helpful. Because it, I, it, everyone know like all these parts of you i'm saying whoever alex is whoever david is in that moment which is a constantly changing phenomena like who we are who i am is constantly changing and it's it and vulnerability is not just about embracing all of those parts of me those parts that might be ugly good bad or whatever that i'm also expressing them as they're happening into them into the moment and i think as i become bad there's no it's happening what's happening at one time simultaneously spontaneously and and i feel in the moment i'm i'm oh, i'm that's with all, the bright world yeah that's good and in in my mind just how i'm interpreting this i think that's what what it is living being honest and being in the moment just by, to me, by definition, vulnerable, being vulnerable, that's a, it's a victim mentality. The vulnerability is a victim mentality. I, it's like when you look at the definition, that's what it means. Um, so that, that's just... No. no. Look, yeah, Dave, that's, look that's, it up. Let's, look let's it, hear look, Yeah, I have the definition right <laughs> here. In, look, I have three definitions I can give you right here. It's right. so, okay. First one is you're susceptible to harm. You're susceptible to harm or emotional attack. Second one, you're in need of special care or support or protection because of <laughs> because of a dis because of a disability. These are just the first few. So I'm saying what we're talking about is a yeah. language thing. And so okay. okay, the third the third one, um, liable to higher penalties either by convention or through having one that get i don't understand that one <laughs> okay all right so the word that i'm trying to define that that definition is only hitting half of it yes i'm open to harm when i'm vulnerable and i'm open to whatever the other thing is that's not harm i'm open to all of it when i'm vulnerable so i think that definition is a bit narrow but maybe there's a better word to define what i'm trying to i to say I, I think being present takes care of it. Okay. Um, no, but I I think this is a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm seeing how <laughs> I'm I'm seeing how tricky conversation is for me. Like we're we're resonating with the same things, and yet we're disagreeing over words and symbols. But we can relate, I can relate to the feeling of vulnerability and of being honest and open um, and what that does for me. Because we do live in, in, in my, from my perspective, we live in a culture, a victim culture, where it's becoming in increasingly celebrated uh, to, be the, to be the victim of something. Like, you're, uh, if you've been the victim of something, you're... That that inherently is worth uh, celebrating. The badge of honor. Right, right. Um, you know, I think that's it's it's relevant to kind of you know the what we're seeing today. Well, I'll, I'll ask you this then: Is it possible that some people are victims? Hundred percent. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Well, you I mean, know, maybe if it, they think they're victims, right? Yeah, I mean, you can argue with like the the laws of like karma and the laws of the universe that um, you know they had it coming, but um, yeah, that, that's that's not to say people like if people don't experience hardships and all that. Yeah. Well. Um, so, do we, do we, I mean, I'm, I'm not. 
Sorry, who's speaking? <laughs> you. I was just. I was just saying, I uh, I got like five minutes left. If we want to like rat, do like a little uh, round circle wrap up. I don't know with our biggest insecure or whatever we want to talk about. David, I can stay on for longer if you want. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, stay on, Bradley. And it's a, it's a nice uh, wooden ceiling, Bradley. Thanks. I had to pee. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's a lot to get into. I wish we had more time with Alex. Uh, Sorry about that, y'all. I was planning on a solid hour. No, no worries. I mean, I Didn't think you it read the text? Poor, poor it communication, I guess. Hours. Oh, my bad. Can't you read, boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, um... <laughs> <laughs> Alex, man, it's good to see you, bro. I feel like there's a lot that uh, we didn't even get to on the material side of things. Like, I'm curious, and I'm sure people out there listening might be curious about, like, what you're up to these days. And No one cares. <laughs> I care. I care. Hopefully big things to uh, report soon. Okay. You feel like you're in the middle of things? Yeah, I got I got nothing really, you know. I've 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 been uh, you know, I I've, I've been trying to work with uh client uh fit a few fitness clients and um but you know, it just kind of same old Austin life. Um uh not um Follow me on Instagram, y'all. <laughs> yeah, you can see how fit he is. <laughs> He's we were fit. lying. <laughs> That boy's got hey, a 12 pack. Hey, I love you guys very much. I'm I'm excited to see how this turns out, uh, cause dude, mm-hmm. I I think I think these are cool, man. It'd be it'd be fun to do it, uh, you know, whatever our schedule permits, you know, whether it's once a month or once a week or whatever. Once yeah, a I, month sounds good. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Yeah, I could commit to a, a more consistent schedule here. Yeah, and I I. <laughs> All right, well, y- y'all wrap it up for me. I love you guys. I right. love you too, Alex. Love you, Skull. Good to see you, man. Bye, bye, Zaza. Bye, bye. See you. <laughs> All right, Bradley. All right, bro. Was uh, there something you were gonna say? You said, "Oh, bro." Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> All right, let's see. I want to make sure I can see you properly. Yeah, man. Uh, All right, there we go. Okay. So how you doing? Yeah, good, man. I'm navigating. I'm navigating conversation in general with Mm -hmm. people. I play a little bit of a role of a teacher role here in Ecuador and I, I host a communications group every week and we dive deep into some of these these concepts of of honesty truth telling and how to use um, words that that reflect um, the truth to its its highest degree and sometimes I, I nitpick and I, I enjoy drilling people on their words because whew, they're tell, now, I, now that I'm learning so much about myself and with language, people can't hide anything. Uh, just what they say says so much about the stories that they're telling themselves, the belief structures that mm. they are um, still supporting doggedly. And, and part of me is... I'm pissed off that I have to listen to this shit. And part of me is like wanting to help and, and to show them. And part of me is just wanting to be a bastard and say, you know, I'm better at this than you motherfucker. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm navigating all of these different emotions and feelings and, uh, and conversation. So yeah, I'm, uh, 
I'm a bit of a case right now. Yeah. No, I feel your emotions. I mean, I don't, I'm not feeling them, but uh, I resonate with what you're saying. Like, yeah, it's, I, I too, I'm, I'm valuing, I don't know. I'm just seeing how poor of a communicator I am and how, just how difficult it is. It's like difficult for us to, I guess this is another story I'm telling myself. I don't know, but I, it's tricky. It's not that it's difficult. It's, it's, it just requires practice and it's tricky. And, and dumbing, it takes a dumb motherfucker to tell the truth. I need to dumb myself down. What I mean by that is our intellectual, our intellectualization, our fetish with understanding and rationalization and all of the thing helps helps drive the engine of distortion in our language. Whereas when I'm just being a dumb motherfucker and just noticing what's going on on the outside, the raw sensory data, and noticing mm-hmm. what's going on in the inside world, the feelings, sensations, and thoughts, that's it. That's all I'm attending to, which is, you know, meditation in a nutshell, essentially. And then, then just expressing those things that, that are arising to express. So, yeah, I just, I, I do feel like stupid sometimes when I'm just saying, yeah, I, I, I want you to shut up, you know, or uh, I'll tell you a story. I was at the campfire the other night and, you know, campfire, I, I like a campfire because it seems to bring out different parts of people and man, it was, it was, it was nostalgic for the PCT. I was bush tired. I went on a long ass hike the day before and I was beat to the bone, man. And do you remember on the PCT, we, we understood and we lived that, that truth telling a lot of the time because we were so tired. We had no energy to give to our facades or at least the, (laughs) the, the most overt fake facades were the first to go. And then we were dealing with more subtle facades probably. But I, I think you understand what I mean. We were so tired. We didn't have the energy to, to be fake. And so I'm around this fire and I'm so tired. The, the PCT nostalgia is coming back. I'm reminded of this, this just honesty and this straightforwardness and feeling so comfortable amongst my, my, I'm not so scared about it being taken personally or if their their thoughts of me are going to change significantly. So this guy, he, I, I think he's real nervous and he's just talking, 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 talking. And he's talking very ultra spiritual, if I could use that. What's <laughs> you know, well, an you know, example? Give me like an example. Life. You know, it's just all about the present moment. And I'm just, I, you know, it's just. It's, it's about like love. I'm just seeing it's, it's just about love all the time. And it's, you know, it's just his interpretations and his, his ideas, but they're not like what's alive within that person himself. They're just these ideas, which are great. And they might be true. They might not be true, but they're not nearly as interesting to me as what's happening actually within that person in that moment. And I looks at him and I says, actually, I didn't even look at him. I'm laying back, looking at the stars, the fires at my feet. And I says, wow, you talk a lot, but you don't say a goddamn thing. (laughs) And he just shut up, man. And I felt great just about saying that. And it wasn't about hurting him. It was never about hurting him. But he got the point, and he knew. And, And that just kicked off this chain of events of honesty and truth telling around the circle and people were just lighting up with it man it, it's mm. like i had started a spark or, or or that guy that guy was fucking grinding the sticks together and i just had the the spark of it but he was doing all the work building up all this tension that no one was acknowledging and in one comment i i acknowledge all of this tension and how I feel about it. And I think a lot of other people resonated with how, what I thought about it. And we just exploded from there, man. 
Mm. That's so, powerful. Yeah, and it took it took a risk from me though. That's he's not gonna like me. That he's gonna think I'm an asshole or whatever. But the more that I take that risk, I realize that those fears that I have, those are also illusory. And yeah, he might think I'm an asshole, but so what? I, I was never in control of what he was going to think anyway. I was just doing my best and spending a lot of energy to uphold the image of myself in his mind. And now I'm just saying, you know what? That's not even my responsibility to begin with. Let him take care of whatever image he has of me. Oh, and that is so fucking freeing, man. Mm-hmm. I just feel so much freer to to let go of of that piece by piece. I haven't let go of it. I'm, I'm not there. But I'm better than I was yesterday, and I'm better than I was last week. And the risks, the the big risks that I thought were huge, look smaller to me now. And and so the, it's I'm in a process of of recognizing my bullshit, calling people out on their bullshit, and just living a more a more honest and basic life. Not just with how I'm living, but with what I'm saying, what I'm noticing, and not intellectually you know masturbating as much um yeah i think i don't know (laughs) (laughs) yeah dude i don't know either man like uh... what tell me tell me what's tell me some of the things that that you're afraid to risk right now? Like what are some of the, the practical day-to-day things that you're struggling with being more honest and truthful, being allowing more of what's happening inside to be on the outside, turning yourself inside out. Oh, that's good. Write that down. Mm-hmm. Turning <laughs> yourself inside out. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess one that comes to mind is like just expressing myself through social media. And I do think I could be better at, or just like, I don't know. I'm a, I've, I've identified with the idea of being a writer. And so I like write my thoughts out, but I do think it's valuable to, and it's like the next level of kind of scariness and fearfulness is like speak the thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, And so like recording myself and like putting myself out there or like going live, you know, like what if I think it would be cool to do one of these live one day, like you, me and Alex and like find a way to I don't know if it's through Twitch or YouTube or how we can make that happen. But like really just like go live and uh, put it out there, like put put my make myself vulnerable in that way. And uh, yeah, because it when i'm in conversation it's easier for me to express myself compared to like when i'm just with myself and i'm in my thoughts i'm like does this thought matter should i share this thought and i think that's reasonable for me to go through i guess because i do notice when i post my thoughts and i share my thoughts that like it, I can feel overwhelmed and I'm like checking social media to see, Oh, did anyone respond to my thoughts? Did anyone engage with my thoughts? Like, and what so does the world think? <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's this duality of like, I don't, I don't know what the right answer is and there doesn't have to be a right answer. And I, that's why I resonate with what you're saying of like, just feeling it in the present moment. Like, is this something that, I really want to be opening up on and like picking and choosing my battles um, resonates with me because there are a lot of things that I'm seeing in society or that like other people are sharing that I'm like, I don't know if that's helpful. And so I'm wanting to share a more quote unquote helpful perspective, but then does that make things even more complicated and like helpful? And so I don't know, man, I'm just, constantly bringing myself back to myself dude that's it what is here in my direct experience right and like the the social media is valuable and useful and i need it to survive and like build a livelihood and at the same time i'm just like i'm 
I'm kind of tired. I, if I, I might, it would be cool to get to the point one day where I don't need it. Like I actually don't need it because I do see it as, or or at least I find a really healthy way to express myself on it. I don't know, man. I don't know if that answered uh, well, your question at all, but <laughs> well, it it does. You point to a lot. I think I think you're holding on to the story that what you need to be outputting has to somehow have value or help someone or be on some spectrum above the line that's not helping and and that's a lot of pressure to put on on oneself i think um because it's going to be helpful to some and not helpful to others but at the end of the day was it helpful to you to just kind of have fun with it play a game with it mm, and yeah man i see you know i i there's there's a voice in you that is is wanting to come out. I mm. I want that voice to come out. <laughs> Damn it. I want that voice. It's in there and it's I'm wanting to, to see more of it and to hear more of it. Um because I, I also feel sad when you tell me about your these thought trains you're having and how how we can get so far removed from from mm -hmm. what's happening in our direct experience and just be thinking about things that are not even happening, presuppositions and all of these things that are just turning up more and more fear and resistance around doing the, the fucking thing itself. So what are you scared of posting on Instagram right now or posting on social media? What is that mm -hmm. thing that, that comes in? What is that wall for you right now exactly? I mean, I think it has to do a lot with uh, the current culture and the current climate of like the world and what I'm seeing from the news and how people are reacting. Like, I'm just trying to make the decision okay. for m for myself. Like, what's best for me? Because I don't. I'm not sure. Like, do I really want to get involved in that stuff? Because I'm seeing how you know, friends of mine or people I follow, like they're, they kind of stick to their lane and then, but they share about all these other things. And then right. suddenly now they're sharing about the political climate and all this. And I'm like, I'm just wondering, is that important? And to what degree, and I, it's not, is that important, but what degree do I want to play in that? Like, do I find that game fun and do I find it useful and how can I make it fun if I do want to play that game? Oh, okay. Okay. So what I'm <laughs> hearing is you have thoughts about what's happening in the world. And, mm. and you're also scared of whether it's going to be valuable or helpful or for your right path, etc. So, again, man, trying to understand what's going to be good for you, what's not going to be good for you, that's another pressure that this another story that i do things that are good for me i only do things that are good for me and helpful towards me and those around me and as opposed to playing the game of just why don't you just saying what you have on your mind and yeah mm. you're probably gonna step on some motherfuckers toes dude but that might be the most helpful thing and and this is the kicker when we are when we do that thing when we when we do the when we share ourselves vulnerably and we look at we're wanting to hear other people's thoughts and we're feeling that nervousness kind of that overwhelming feeling of of yeah. doing that yeah. i think that is a part of us dying and we feel disoriented when that happens totally and so we're looking i'm looking for the outside world for reorientation and validation about what i'm saying and as i'm more aware of that it's i think the awareness alone is curative I'm seeing, wow, that sensation, that overwhelming sensation is a burst of energy. Like, holy mm. shit, is that, that is a fucking wellspring I just tapped into. And then, and then, you know, I might go eat a bunch of shit and, and suppress it a little bit. <laughs> but I, I think there's something very powerful about that overwhelming feeling yeah. of whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And I'm just disoriented of it. I'm not... I haven't like got my bearings on it yet and maybe I never will, but I, I, that's the direction. That's like my guidepost now. Oh shit. Like I feel, 
I feel something arising. I feel uncomfortable about saying this. Like I, I think people are gonna be mad about this or uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. Well, it's an entirely new direction too. Like if if mm-hmm. I were to t- start sharing that content, and so like all the images and the stories that I'm telling myself right about like and, and all the uh, all the content that I, like I had written before and like didn't share like all that is just useless now, you know? And so it's like this complete rebirth. And I mean, you know, it's not a complete rebirth, I don't think, but I think you're right. Like it does feel, I do feel resistance to share. Right. I do feel that. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's another (laughs) story that you're Mm -hmm. saying, you're saying that all of your, that you past David and everything that you've come up with is somehow useless when you begin body this more dynamic David that really can't be pinned down as easily because you're not even pinning yourself down. You're changing constantly, but dude, who that's, that's still going to be useful and the shit behind you will still be useful for those people mm. that, that are still maybe in a static form of themselves and that are on their way to a more dynamic version of themselves that that no longer puts effort into pinning oneself down, but just embraces that, oh my gosh, I'm all of this fucking shit. I am the 31-year-old, you know, still lost and not knowing what the fuck I'm doing with my life, <laughs> still, <laughs> still, still subtly leeching off my parents' resources in very subtle ways, and and I feel like a piece of shit about that. And I feel directionless at times. I, and sometimes I feel strong and, and deeply insecure about my body and lazy and, and just all of it, dude. I'm all of it. And the more that I embrace all of these shitty parts about me, it's like now I'm finally free to make the changes that I want to change without struggling, but just mm. an effortless change that, oh, Oh, you just needed to be recognized. I just that part of me just needed recognition and really a, 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 an honest recognition about that part of me. That 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 there's nothing there's nothing in the corner now. There's nothing under the rug that I'm not willing to look at in myself. Mm. And that's I, I think I have a fucking superpower, dude. Just going on this path of 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 recognition of these shitty parts of myself and not just recognizing within me and internalizing it, but really sticking my neck out, man. Like telling my neighbor that I'm a, you know, I, I, I'm still doing these fucking things and playing these games with, with the people around me and manipulating them and, and scared of not having what I need and whatever, all of these nonsense Mm -hmm. things, but that they're part of me. I'm being, that's me. That's me. I'm no longer taking, putting so much weight onto this idealized version of myself because I'm recognizing that one, that's not me. That's not truth. And, and my drive for, for uncovering and experiencing truth is finally outweighing my need to uphold the idyllic version of myself. And so I think anyone on this journey is going to get to that point when they've got to decide, okay, do I hang on for to this idyllic version of myself? And I, I think if anyone gets to that honest point, they'll realize how much suffering it is to hang on to that and how much mm. energy and life force it takes to hang on to that. Or do I start to take real fucking risks in my life and use my life as a fun game and a fun social experiment to, to, to rediscover who I am? I have to now admit, I don't know who I am. This thing that I thought I was, and for most people, that's who they think they are. They're not even aware that that's an idealized version of themselves. That's who they really think they are. And, and oh, I feel sad and fucking angry at the same time for those people. But then we get to the stage where, okay, yeah, this is a story. I get that. This is a story, but this is still a big question mark about who I am. And I'm not that interested in discovering who I am yet because this is still pretty to me, this version of myself. But Mm -hmm. there's separation now. It's not me. I know that that's not me. I don't know who I am, but I know that that's not me. And then eventually you get to a stage where, okay, fuck, I'm, I'm, 
I'm like actually the antithesis of this idealized version <laughs> of me, or at least part of parts of me are. Right, and right. So now I'm now I'm rediscovering those parts of me, and and that I think I'm embracing all of it as much as I can. That when I get down to it. It's just I'm this this changing phenomena, which I knew all along intellectually, but now I'm experiencing it much more, mm-hmm. not just at a sensational level, but at a at an emotional and mental level. Like I'm embracing the thoughts of, dude, I, you, you ever hold a knife around someone and you think, damn, I could just fucking stab this person in the back. <laughs> I could just stab my mom in the back right now. I have this knife. And I'm like, oh, shit. Where did that thought come from? Like, what is that all about? But, yeah, maybe there's a fucking angry person in there that that would do that. So what is it? What is it? Peterson, right? Peterson alludes to that. That mm-hmm. when, when you realize that you were the Nazi all along, too, that you would have done the same fucking thing all along, then you can finally start to have a sense of freedom. <sighs> Well, dude, and this is, yeah, man. Yeah, I've I've been going through similar stuff that I'm realizing I'm not. What is it, dude? What are you going through? Give me the dude, juicy I'm specifics. Not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who I think I was. And yet, you know, who we are to other people is the stories that we tell. Right. And so I'm not even that thing. So like no right. one, hey. no one knows who I am except me and the stories and that I tell. You know it. And, the, and, and not even, and you not know even it. I. Yeah, well, and I might know myself in some ways. In the moment. Yet, right. In the moment. And the, the moment the, keeps changing, changing, changing. And I'm seeing that these, the, the darkness I don't know. It sounds cheesy, but like darkness cannot exist without light. Light cannot exist without darkness. Like we need both these things. We need to integrate both of these things and see them for what they are actually. And like not try and hide them and act like we're like above something. And that's what I'm seeing in society play out is like, okay, we're destroying all these like Confederate statues. We're like doing all this stuff. And it's like suppressing these bad parts of ourselves and really like, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is to that, to that thing, but like it's, it's seeing those statues as like, yeah, that's still part of us and not to like throw them in the river and like destroy them, but like really to, and I don't know if you want to put them in a museum or what, but like, Yeah, man, I'm just, I'm seeing that as like a, a mistake. Like people need mm-hmm. to, I, I need to, what's helped me is reflecting on the darker parts of myself, kind of what you're saying, like, oh yeah, I am greedy as fuck. I am gluten- gluttonous. I am these things. And so like, you know, I am judgmental of people who are different than me. And rather than putting that off and like oh no we're not the i'm not these things i'm not it's like no we are these things and we need to be confronted with them every day and reminded and see and also see like we've made a lot of progress like i've made a lot of progress as an individual but it hasn't come from neglecting the darker sides it's been from integrating them going through phases of ego going through phases of extreme greediness and mine me me and then seeing right. it actually that's not getting me where i want to be and like going through that over and over again over and over again um so yeah i'm just seeing what's happening inside of me reflected out in the world and i'm wanting to provide direction <laughs> And I'm valuable. Damn it. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> and I'm, yeah, Dude, I'm just, yeah, go ahead. I'm one, and I'm, and I'm also wanting to be content just with whatever's happening. Like, this is where people are at. This is where I'm at. Wonderful. Yeah. 
like just letting that be and letting and moving it. moving forward. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and you're wanting the struggle too. There's a part of you that needs to be accepted that you want the struggle. You want the the pendulum swinging back and forth, extreme, extreme. I'm good. I'm bad. I'm good. I'm bad. Blah blah. Like that mm. part of me, that was a big breakthrough for me in realizing, holy shit, I want this fight. This fight that I'm putting up within myself. I want uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, okay. You this is good. Sadistic th- motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, I don't, I don't know if it's a dude thing or what, but I felt this with the women, like that I encounter. Like if women come easily to me, I don't, I feel like it's not meant to be or something. Like the <laughs> stories, like I have this story in my mind that like I'm supposed to reach this certain spot and like attract this woman who's like, and I like fight for the woman. You know? yeah, you're running across bullshit. the Sahara Desert. Yeah. I gotta get her. I gotta get her. <laughs> Dude, it's all bullshit. It's all. But yeah, it, it, I think being addicted to the the fight is it's unhelpful. It's uh, it's unhelpful for me. And but until, and until it's not time, until it's not right until it deals with survival and and identity and whatnot. But I guess what I'm trying to get to is like if my mind is gonna tell stories and that's how it's gonna work, then I might as well tell a good one, man. <laughs> like <laughs> that that's kind of the direction I'm going right now. Okay, I hear you. I th- am I, all right. Am I understanding correctly? Yeah, I man, cause I I thought the same thing. That okay, if I'm full of a bunch of stories, I'm gonna pick the story. But then I got to like, well, what if what if I don't know the story that I am? What if the story is trying to tell itself and reveal itself to me? And by picking <laughs> the story that I want, that I'm closing the door on everything else and I'm just opening this one door and I'm just seeing now that playing the game of of noticing and awareness of what's happening with my outside world and my inside world I'm free to be exactly the person that is needed in the context of the situation and so this is what I think they that they mean when they say the, the old scriptures that that we are vessels for nature. We are instruments of God when we when we finally get out of our way. And so sometimes the, that that situation might need for me to be vulnerable about. Yeah, if, you know, I feel I feel uh, I I'm sad about this or whatever. And sometimes that situation needs you know the guy who tells the other person to shut the fuck up and and that we can embrace all those parts of us because. We finally understood at an experiential level that there's not one story that's ever going to define who we are, but that Mm -hmm. we're constantly changing. And if I'm just spontaneously acting to whatever is needed in the situation, then then I am I am telling the truth of that situation. Dude, yeah. okay. (laughs) see, this is this is where it gets paradoxical, though. Tell and me. it's not because I think it's both like it's not it's not one or the other like, oh, I'm choosing my story and I'm following that story. And it's or and it's not completely, oh, I'm just aimless living in the moment. It's like both or something in between, you know, like or just different. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. that's my story right now. I'm respecting whatever right. is arising within me. And so that's my story. I've got that's another I've story, got, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my story, and it's kind of a meta story, but it's still a story right, that right. I'm sure I'll need to give up with at some point. And and maybe it's just this balancing act. Yeah, for so long I was creating my story and picking and choosing the things that I wanted to say, and now I'm much more cavalier and just saying things off the cuff and whatever the fuck's coming to mind and perhaps there'll be some room in the middle there at some point where there'll be discernment for 
what's the what's the you know maybe i'll play a more active role as a creator and mm -hmm. i don't know it's it's true though i'm also operating on a story i'm full of it <laughs> dude and i get off dude i get off on saying that i'm full of shit i think that i'm somehow superior to ooh, those that i'm talking to about it ooh. that i'm that <laughs> because deep. i'm full of shit and i'm 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 now off the cuff and you're free now dude more that yeah that i'm i'm better than those who aren't so yeah i've got i'm i'm jerking myself off in this whole thing too man and i like it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah it's, it's i'm also uh, wanting someone else to jerk me off if i'm honest <laughs> It's well, been a you're long time, me, dude. You gotta keep moving. <laughs> gotta keep moving along. <laughs> yeah, man. Have uh, are there are there females down there? Are you chatting? What's yeah. that like these days? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm so scared. Uh, I want it. I want you know. I want to be in a physical, intimate relationship, and and. I, I want to feel that fear on some level. And then I'm on another, I'm like, eh, it's too scary. What if I, what if I ejaculate in like 10 seconds? Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, performance issues for sure. I'm, I'm afraid. I mean, I haven't had sex in six fucking years. Like that thing could be, mm. I could be done before it, it even begins literally. <laughs> so <laughs> Well, dude, I'll I'll just say that, like I don't know what your experience is going to be. I'm not gonna kid myself, but like my experience, um, you know, I've gone through long stretches of celibacy, and some intended, some not. But uh, yeah, I think if you find the right, the right woman, and you, like you have good communication skills, man, like I think she would understand no matter which way it went, and. <laughs> It's a skill set. I think sex is a skill set, and you build it up again, and you'll be fine in no time, bro. <laughs> I agree, but it's funny that you're. Tr I think it's interesting that you're trying to like remedy my my feelings oh, in some see. way, yeah, okay. like make okay. me feel better. Because actually, I'm not as afraid. I'm afraid of what they'll think for sure, but I'm more afraid of like having to. F I'm more afraid of me facing that part of me. Interesting. So. Yeah, like really coming to grips that, oh wow, you're, you're really like you said, it's a skill set, it's a practice. It'd be, you know, it'd be like, it'd be like jumping back into a sport that you haven't played for a long time. And I'm like, oh shit, I used to be a good dribbler, and I can barely like cross over now. And now it's like, uh, so do I put it in here or <laughs> remind me again? <laughs> You know, so I'm just a little, you know, I don't like looking bad or being bad at something. And so mm -hmm. I I know I'll I'll probably be bad at it or I might come racing back like a, the stallion I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and that, th those kind of remarks... Like, that just came out, man. You didn't think about anything. You just said, keep dreaming, you fucker. You, you know, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't want you to, I, I, you know, as such a good friend, I, I want to talk to you in these candid ways without, like, like, you trying to fix me or me trying to fix you. I'm just mm -hmm. wanting, and, and I'm wanting, if I really want your advice and opinion, I'm wanting... I'm wanting to say it, you know, I'm wanting to have the strength to be like, dude, like, fuck, I know you've been through something like this. What's going on? And, and honestly, I'm, I'm scared of that. I'm scared of asking people for advice. I've, mm -hmm. I've created the story that I am the advice giver. I am the wise man. You come to me. I did not come, come hither. <laughs> he doth lurk. Come, come to his presence. Come for the <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 that's that's an area that I want to get better at is hearing others' perspectives and taking them seriously and 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 asking for advice. So so I'll just put it to the test now. Um, mm. Let's see. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, what do you think about, what do you think about, oh, see now I've hit the spot. I've hit the wall now. I know where it's, I know where the, <laughs> I know where the edge is him. now. I know where the edge is now. Cause what if they see this? What if they watch this, the person and they know that I'm talking about them and then what then, you know? What if they think less of me then? <laughs> All right. So, what do you think about what do you think about feeling attracted to someone on Instagram and and making some sort of effort to establish a deeper connection on Instagram and hopefully yeah. like one day in real life? Uh... Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> is this uh, something you're experiencing right now? I'm yeah, gonna assume that. Yeah, yeah, I'm experiencing that, and I think it's, I think it's awesome, and super lame at the same time. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's a little bit lame. So, <laughs> here's, look, I don't know. Here's my advice. My advice would be, uh to move, to progress beyond Instagram into a phone call or a, yeah. a video chat of some sort. Um, Which is exactly what I'm doing and what I have done and in, in, initiated. So, boom. Yeah. We need to take this, like, this despicable Instagram relationship. To, <laughs> I, we need to go up. We need to Skype this bitch. That's what we need dude. to do, dude. <laughs> That's... <laughs> You got to move up. You got to move up sometime. <laughs> and dude, well, it, it, I say that because like I've been there as well. And like, yeah, it's just even even Skype, it's it's so hard to know someone. And right. just in like a, a being, there's so much to a being, right, like right. a human being. And we might even think we could be deceiving ourselves too. Like I know I've deceived myself into finding someone attractive and then you meet up with the person and it's like, Oh, even like, I think we're fat. (laughs) Well, that's, uh, (laughs) that's good. That would be, (laughs) I I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that. (laughs) Well, if it was to say, if that's what you're into, so be it. But like, Hopefully they wouldn't be deceiving you in that way, or that you wouldn't deceive yourself. But like, there's so much to a person, and like, I'm attracted to to someone's like the way they move, you know, the way mm. they the way they gesture, the way they react to things, and none of we can't like all these subtle clues. Like, we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to, to see through like this flat screen, you know. Mm. yeah i i just i love when you say that because there's something there's like i feel an insatiable curiosity about this person like i want to know like how all of the steps that they took to get to the person where they are i want to know their triumphs and their hardships and I want to, I want to watch them like as a fly on the wall. Like you yeah. said, I want to watch them walk. I want to watch them do things. I want to watch them to understand what they're like when they're alone. I want to understand their thinking process. I want to like, I'm just so like insatiably curious about this person. And I'm wondering if that's the same as attraction and like why I'm so curious about this person I'm I'm wanting to know why where it comes from and also I'm I'm I think that I'm creepy also at times with how much that I want to know about this person and I'm weirded out by myself like <laughs> damn I, I'm I'm scared of really showing this person like what what's going on in my head and heart because they might think I'm a fucking psycho man but it's true I want to know I'm so curious, mm. bro. And it, 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 oh man, it's 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 like is it love is like uh, uh, 
you know, I, I, it's like, it's like I, I hated from this person for a long time and now I'm wanting to reunite and I'm so curious, like, you know, like after we didn't spend so much time, for example, amongst each other, it's like, I'm so curious about what you were going through in your life during that time that I wasn't involved. And I'm so eager to share with you, like the things that I'm doing and all the cool shit that I've done and all the and all the the weird things that I've experienced and all of my darkest, you know, like un unlighted thoughts and just all of it, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'd love to get into that with you. Um, whether that's now or another time, like I, I'm up for it. And I think that's like what I don't know, when Alex left the podcast, I was I'm so curious about him too, like and for him to say, I don't know, I felt like he was dismissive of his experience. Like, oh, nothing's changed. Like, I'm still in Austin, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yes, I'm still in Dallas. Like, I live a very, what I see as like a very ordinary yeah. life, you know? It's not the truth. He wasn't acknowledging it's, the truth. He was saying, this, mm. my experience is static. He was saying, my experience is static. And I'm calling bullshit. You're actually, it's actually dynamic. I think he was also wanting to look too fucking cool and have the right ideas and the right perspectives. And, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I resent him for that. I thought we, we, we didn't say fucking much that first hour, truthfully. So, but maybe that's what we needed to finally get to this. I had to see, oh yeah, we're just, we're just jerking each other off again. Here we go. <laughs> and, <laughs> Well, this is what I was trying to get to when we were on the when we were all three on the podcast was like, it's like I, I and I couldn't find a good way to express it because what I was saying was communication's difficult and it's hard to communicate with people. But what I really meant was, I'm having the sense that we're all three having trouble communicating right now. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Because, do you feel connected to me right now? Like, we're getting hung honest, up on all connected? these like yeah. definitions and I don't know, like I'm willing to surrender, I guess, w my previously held definitions of things and just let people mm -hmm. speak. And I felt like it was on both ends of you guys, like was that I'm sure there's just nitpickiness, nitpickiness, nitpick and like, and what we're trying to do is like express what I'm trying to do is to express my own perspective through that nitpickiness and through, and what I wanted was to bring you guys together and pr to bring us together. Um, I don't know, but dude, I, man, I, and that maybe that was a malignment from the beginning. I'm so disinterested and I, I don't want to hear your perspective. I don't want to hear Alex's perspective. That's not, that's not giving me an accurate definition mm. of, of what is happening with David and Alex. All that that's telling me is, oh, okay, this is this is what this part of your idealized version looks like. Okay, cool. All right, shine it off. Let's move on to the next one. What about this topic? What's your perspective of this? What does your shiny version of you look like on this perspective? Dude, and I'm like, okay. Fuck, dude, I'm, I'm not wanting that shiny perspective. Like, what is happening with you? But I'm finding it also challenging because not – everyone even knows how to reorient their their language and their experience back in on themselves so i nitpick sometimes because i'm pointing with no reorient at least your language back in on yourself so we can start from somewhere for fuck's sake and so that's why i nitpick sometimes and yeah i know i'm an, an asshole for doing it and and petty but it's i i'm I'm wanting to get into the conversation, but really what first needs to happen is there needs to be a framework of, okay, have we re have we learned to at least reorient our experience inward? And do we have some basic communicative skills to be able to share that with the fellow human? Mm. And if we're not there <laughs> yet, then I notice that where I come in is like trying to catch everyone up to speed in the most annoying way possible to get to that point and that is me nitpicking and okay no let's just we got to keep reorienting just keep reorienting back in because that's what we're all interested in is just talking yes. about what's happening within us 
Right. Okay. So what I'm hearing is like the most, or what, what I'm thinking, I guess, is the, the active strategy to getting us to talk about our experience through correcting and like, like nitpicking, but rather asking like what I'm want and like getting clear on what it is we actually want to hear. Okay. Yes. I, I feel yeah. like, you know, in our conversation, we, in the beginning, I think we were on the right direction. Like, okay, what are you guys feeling? What's up with your, in your lives right now? What are y'all doing? Like, what's it, what's it like to be you? And then, so we had the right starting, we were out of the gates correctly, but we kept getting lost through concepts and ideas. And we, I didn't have enough skill to bring it back to, well, what's going on in your life right now? Because that's actually what I'm interested mm. in. Like, right, what, right. what does your day-to-day look like? Like, and I feel like that's what I'm missing out from both of you guys was like, I'm wanting to know what Alex's life is like. I'm, and at the very end, like, I'm wanting to know what his plans for the future are or whatever this might be. And yet, you know, we're cut short. And so I guess mm. now that I've, now that we're here, I'm curious about, you know, whatever you'd like to share uh, in regards to these events that have been going on. Um, yeah. And yeah, just like what your day to day experience has been like and what's mm. <clears throat> what's what's your yes. plan for the future? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Some, I like those questions. And I think you're you're absolutely spot on when when I'm nitpicking, it is a, it's an unskillful way of, of trying to change the person to give me the, the thing that I'm wanting in the right mold, instead of just asking them for what I want, mm-hmm. point blank. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, it just, it's, it's remarkable, like reflecting <laughs> back on that first hour, just how how much energy I'm willing to spend to uphold stories of myself and to really, um, yeah, paint myself in a, in a pretty damn good light. I mean, I even like, I set the chair up so that I get the good sunlight and look, good. <laughs> I'll even like sometimes put up, like do a little flex up here. Like, Oh, that's a bicep. No big deal. <laughs> but just, yeah, I'm wanting to just express just how how these parts I'm I'm just petty sometimes and selfish and so egotistical and and a big part of my day is um I'm by myself and so I'm you know I wake up when I want to wake up and. I do some work around the property, do some work around the house. I'm taking care of a home in Ecuador right now. So mm. I have some some basic menial responsibilities. And I spend a lot of time. I'm, I am surrounded by nature. So I spend a lot of time in the sunshine. I eat really fresh food. And I'm, I hardly ever wear shoes. I have access to cold and warm water. Um, I have, I, you know, I, I drink my urine for the first you know, six hours of the day, I just loop that before I eat. And I have some pretty damn good habits during the day that I feel great about. And then nighttime comes and I, whew, I just, the shit hits the fan, bro. I, you <laughs> night know, and day, I, baby. I, I don't feel great about some of the things that I do at night and those parts of me, I haven't fully accepted I still, mm. I still binge on food that I'm not, you know, proud of. I eat, I mean, it's all relative, right? I mean, to some, they might look at me and be like, shut the fuck up, dude. You're fine. You're eating fine. I mean, I eat a lot of off the land food and fresh food, but I'm setting so high standards of myself. I'm still yes. upholding the idealized version of myself. And so Instead of just allowing myself, all right, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm binging right now, and I accept that or whatever. I'm, I'm a big pussy to face whatever fears that I have right now. I, I uphold the energy that this 
this person that's binging and afraid, that's not the real me. That's not, not the real inner light being, divine light worker me, whatever the fuck <laughs> that is. And yeah, and I'm mm. and I am talking to like the ultra spiritual community too, because I think there's a lot of spiritual bypassing and bullshitting going on in that. And and I see it in myself. So yeah, I'm in the process right now of little by little accepting those parts of me i'm not the version that i want myself to be and and that's painful at times and often it's not nearly as painful as i i project it to be it's actually it's like oh okay oh i'm mm. not this person i'm actually i feel better a lot of times and then i'll feel that re that dis that overwhelming feeling sometimes in my stomach or my chest I, I feel disoriented like okay if this isn't me Oh shit! Then what am I? What do I do? Like I, I'm also I'm I feel at, I'm at a loss for what to do actually. And, and instead of just sitting there with it, I'm I'm almost frantic and and chaotic and wanting to do something to to have some sort of grounding experience or some familiar experience. And so I'll revert back to. Oh, I know what it's like to to feel like a piece of shit and heavy and lazy and tired after I eat a bunch of food. So let me do that real quick and I'll get back to that. At least it's familiar. But that's happening less and less. And mm -hmm. I'm happy about that and also just tired of it happening in the first place. I'm wanting it to be over and I'm wanting to, to accept those parts of me and move on. But I know that I'm not accepting them fully I'm still a fucking pussy, and uh, yeah. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> Man, yeah, dude. I hope people watch this, dude. I hope people watch this and get something from it. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm getting a lot out from it, man. Cause yeah, every time, yeah, it's it's pretty consistent whenever I'm speaking with you and whenever I'm speaking with Alex and yeah, just stuff comes up, stuff comes up. And especially for how much time passes between the times we've been speaking. Um, but even that dude, like I was, this is one thing I was writing about in the, in the, in the new book was that when we were on the bus heading towards Pokhara, I was realizing like, I don't know if you remember, but we were just having such good conversation and about so many things about like expectations in regards to wanting our family to change, <clears throat> wanting to find a soulmate, expressing our future desires and just seeing a, like how deep people are. And even the people that we're surrounded by every day, like we just, I, I get comfortable with them, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I, I stop probing or I stop, I stop sharing myself and I stop really listening stop. and being yeah. with them. I stop everything. Stop rocking the boat. <laughs> For real, man. Smooth sailing, calm waters. That's it. That's all. And yeah. it leads to like a certain complacency, which is good. Like, you know, there is something to that, I think, like just unconditional love. Like, okay, I, you know, I love you for who you are in this moment. And at the same time, making sure that we're, that I'm bringing up the things that I'm feeling. And this kind of takes us full, full loop here, um, full circle is like, if I am feeling something, I want to be expressing that, man. And right. right. That's what feels good. It's like, I mean, I've I've been living here with my parents for the last six months, and God, you're a loser, Damn. dude. You should, you should see it. You should see it in person, bro. My bedroom's just like a mess. We have a house cleaner that comes and just like cleans up after me. <laughs> he 
you're like English. 13 again. <laughs> Dude, it's great. It's great. I, I, know. I love it, honestly. I so love it. I but love remember, But remember when you were 13? Uh-huh. Were, did you talk back when you were 13? Did you sass back? Is that part of you alive too still? Right? I, when I was 13, I was talking back, man. I, I was talking <laughs> back. And now I'm I, I'm not talking back as much as my parents. Yeah. I, but I, you know, that's. I don't know. I want to touch one on one thing you said. I have yeah. no problem with unconditional love. I think it's great. I think it's an admirable thing to experience, and it probably feels great. I'm pissed at the people who think that just because they can say in their head, "No, I love this person," and at the same moment suppress whatever rage or actual feelings they're having about that person that that is dangerous i'm that pisses me off mm-hmm. um so if the unconditional love is real then great if you love that person in that moment then fucking express it yeah mm-hmm. but we, we 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 i see myself and more partial to to love or to kindness or to these other feelings and so when I ask myself the question, wow, if I really love this someone and I'm afraid that I won't be able to see them again, do I do I say it? Do I take the courage and say that I love them? Well, fuck yeah, I do. I tell them I love them because I'm feeling that. And I'd feel terrible if I didn't. But it's no mm. different on the other side of the coin, okay? Do I, give, do I give up the chance to tell this person that I'm upset that they did this? I'm pissed off that they did this. and And just let that go? And now I'm starting to feel terrible when I don't say that. Mm. So uh, yesterday in my in the communication group I host, we had an exercise where each person would go around to the other group members and tell them something they resent them for in the whole in the entire experience that they've known each other. And you and I have done this too. Mm-hmm. So each person went around the group and shared why they resent or that I, they just said I resent you, I resent you for this thing, for that thing, whatever. And and I asked them after um, because we talked about, you know, why do why don't we share these resentments in the moment when they're happening? And instead, we lo- we allow them to build up and we create these knots and tensions and these ideas mm-hmm. around people instead of just sharing those things in the moment, nipping them in the bud when they're happening and moving on with their fucking lives. Instead, our preference is to hold on to it, let it fester in the wound Add more shit to that wound. Keep opening that wound, and then, and then pretend like we're not fucking hurting, and that mm. this person doesn't piss us off, and we're just avoiding that. That my shoulder is is fucking split in half, and I'm bleeding profusely. And oh, 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 that oh, just a flesh wound, nothing there. And now I'm finally starting to dr- address these wounds. And so, anyways, I ask people, why aren't they, why aren't they sharing these resentments? And the top answer, if not the second top answer, I'm afraid what they'll think of me after. I'm afraid they'll be upset with me. I'm afraid yes. they'll be disappointed. I don't <laughs> want to be viewed as a person that is offensive or that steps on each other's toes. And I said, okay, fine. I agree. I understand that. But for this exercise, we are going to put that aside and be willing to look each other in the eyes and share what we resent them for. And dude, petty, seemingly petty things were arising that we would have never known about one another. And so I asked them after, a little focus, a little reflection after. I said, okay, did your thoughts about that person change in any significant way about that person after they told you they resented you? And all of them, well, well, no, not really. If anything, I actually respect that person more than before and and i'm getting kind of emotional now and i feel it coming through me because it's so damn powerful okay this person someone one person in the group expressed a resentment and it was something so petty they were leaving their food out and this person kept putting their food back in place to where it belonged And this person was doing it to be nice so that the other person would notice that someone moved their food and would become more aware of it. And so they would start moving the food on their own. This person did it over a hundred 
times he did this. And this person mm. never noticed that someone was moving their food, the other person. This person went through so much effort to avoid stepping on someone's shoes or to avoid the risk of someone being displeased with them. And yesterday that came through and the person told him and the person whose food was being moved said, I had no idea that you were moving my food this whole time. I didn't even know anyone was moving my food. And this person who was moving the food finally got to see the, the futility of trying to control and manipulate and subtly change how other people behave to fit our, our modalities of what someone should do. And instead, just say why you're upset with them. And that's it. And get it off the table. And it was just <laughs> like, oh, my God. If that is happening right now, I can't even imagine the kind of effort and energy that I was pouring in to, to changing the world around me, to upholding the story of myself and all of these, basically to uphold illusion, how much energy I was putting to, to creating and sustaining the illusion, how much energy I was putting forth to lie. That, that's what it comes down to. I pouring so much energy into lying to myself and to those around me. I've been lying. Mm. And I'm pissed off and, and sad and <laughs> upset and just like, oh, God damn, when can I start to live my life? Who the fuck am I? <sighs> wow. I'm Thank vibrating you, man. like a motherfucker right now, dude. Mm. I'm shaking from the inside out. <laughs> this, this, I feel alive now when I'm mm. sharing these things. And I feel alive when I see your eyes glaze over and know that, damn, there's something alive in him. And if I keep doing this, maybe he'll be alive with me. And then maybe <laughs> I won't be alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now we get down to it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we're all, I, I think on some level, I'm just trying to wake myself up and wake mm -hmm. those up around me. And, and I don't know any other way than by just digging deeper into the truth. And right now for me, that is expressing the truth, aligning inside and out, turning myself inside out and, and letting the crows rip me apart, bro. Mm. wow man thank you thank you for sharing that like yeah i mean i know we've already discussed what what i went through with like my parents right like <clears throat> yeah so it's already been told but i i guess i'll tell it again for anyone yes. listening. i do think yeah. yeah stick your neck out there's value in sticking your neck out even Dude, farther like, into a bigger audience so i mean i was feeling the same way about like my parents and holding resentments against them and it's like it would be the smallest shit like uh you know they were watching like every night it's it's been quarantine and so it's just me and them like it's it's us three here and you know over time things things build up and things happen and and especially when someone's your parents like there's such a complex relationship shit goes all the way back like it doesn't just go back it goes all the way back oh my god yeah dude you uh, came out of your mama's cooter <laughs> this is thank far you, back thank you for the graphics thank you for the graphics appreciate that bro and like, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I hide stuff from them. I hide stuff from express because mm. there's like a, there's an image and a, a hierarchy in place and it's an illusion. The, the hierarchy is also an illusion. And dude, what's the image? Let's get down to that. What's the image? Let's speak. Let's, let's get it at the nuts and bolts. What's the image? Well, I guess the image is like, 
I'm not one to express my dissatisfactions with them mm. because who am I? Who am I? Like they gave birth to me. They're housing me they're fucking giving me everything i want in life and yet i right, find dis right. dissatisfactions with them like what right right yeah so you so what? the story is gratitude and dissatisfaction are mm, are right, right, proportional right. right so you can't, they can't you can't coexist. be grateful and yeah exactly yeah yeah they're not but mutually exclusive right or, and, no, but the story is that they are mutually exclusive. Right, right. That's the story, yeah. And so who am I? I'm not allowed to express my dissatisfactions because of this image and because of their relationship. And right. so... You're an ungrateful piece of shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sh just shut up, David. <laughs> shut up. And, but that part too, but that part too, bro, that's useful, right? That part totally, needs totally. loving too. That that yeah, there's times where I'm not grateful. Well, like, and that's I'm just where, not grateful that's, for everything they've done. Yeah. And that's Go where ahead. I'm getting. Sorry. That's what I'm getting to is that, you know, I was holding these dis dissatisfactions, and you know, they were watching all these sh television shows at night, and I was like getting pissed. I'm like, you guys watch so much TV, all these damn shows, and finally, you know, at at first, again, I was not expressing that I was just sitting there with it going inward to myself going on my own laptop watching videos writing and instead of voicing how I actually felt and one night it just came to a head with all this different stuff not even just the tv but like the woman I was seeing and you know I felt like I I they wouldn't accept who she was because of conservative principles within my family and conservative values. And she was not that. And my fears about presenting her to them and just about my life path in general and feeling like, you know, similar feelings that you've expressed, like leeching off of them and feeling bad about that. And then expressing my dissatisfaction with all the damn shows they're watching. And they were like, and I held these things within me for so long because mm. I didn't want for them to think worse of me and for them to think bad of me and to cause mm. to cause conflict. And yet these these were the things, these were the very things that were keeping us apart or mm. that were keeping me from them. They they already and what I, what I learned was like, they already love me. They all, they don't give a shit what I think about their shows. They like their shows. They want to watch their shows. What's, <laughs> what's the, pro the problem? The problem is me, like in the way I'm thinking about it. And so, man, getting that off my chest and expressing all this deep shit to them was like the best thing that's happened to uh, to like us and our relationship and after that we've been like building gardens we've been uh <laughs> hang, we've been, like hanging out doing these different home house projects and it's like goddamn brady bunch goddamn movie goddamn it's a show of its own <laughs> and so yeah man it's like it's a pair it's it's an illusion these things that we think we don't want to cause conflict are actually the things that will bring us closer to these people. And right, right. how long that festers within us. And the quicker that we can, that I can catch the illusion and the story of <clears throat> I'm hiding this for my own good and for their own good, mm. the quicker I can catch that and address it. Oh man, that's that's like having the key to the door and opening up the door to connection and love. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, absolutely, man. man. That's what I've been experiencing over here. So. <laughs> that's that's great. I'm really happy to hear you say that. And yeah, you know what's coming to mind is. Is Alex earlier talking about vulnerability and opening yourself up to harm? And I actually, now that I think it's right, 
I think I'm opening myself up to harm. And, mm. and, and the more that I realize that, that I'm opening myself up to harm, and I'm recognizing that I'm, I'm hurt in all of these places, and the more I acknowledge all of these different hurts and traumas and feelings and parts of me, that I'm invulnerable in a, mm-hmm. like there's nothing there's nothing now that you can tell me or do to me that's gonna hurt me because I've already done the work I've looked at that part of me already I've already accepted that and just because you're not accepting it anymore she has no bearing on me mm-hmm. I'm, in, I'm I'm immune I'm like walking around immune to bullshit more and more the more that I accept my own bullshit or, or if I am hearing bullshit, it's like, Oh, I've got a vaccine for that. Here you go. And I just lay it on. Mm. And I'm just, you know, the more I accept these, this shit within me, the more I, be, I don't know. I am, am. I think the more of service I am. Yes. Know, I yes. There's, I, and if you if you are if you are hurt and if I am hurt, then I want to be expressing those things because how else am I supposed to get help? How else am I supposed right. to help? How else am I supposed to help myself? Right, right. Yeah, and then we go from there. Oh shit, yeah. And sometimes I say things off the cuff, and this person might be hurt. Okay, well now here we are. We're in a new moment. You're hurt. I said something. And I feel bad about that, but I'm not, I'm not sorry or whatever, you know, and then we keep moving from there. Like, let's keep moving from there. Let's not let's not keep re digging up the past. But let's once we get the past out of the way, let's move mm. forward. Let's just keep moving forward. OK, I I'll, I'll, I'll want to share some about my parents and some of my success I've had with my parents, please, because I feel so close with my parents and um. Yeah, and each time, each time I talk to them, I talk to them every Sunday, and every time I talk to them, it's it's this new discovery about okay, like there's a new layer of shit now that we need to go through. Like I haven't seen you or heard from you for a week, and we're either gonna talk about that week or dig up something that we haven't resolved before. So whatever. Anyway, so me and my mom get into a little discussion, and just to give you an idea of how powerful truth telling is, you know, ten years ago. Having an argument with my mom would have been taken personally by both sides. My mom would have probably walked away, and we wouldn't have spoken for at least a day, probably, until she cooled down, and I still thought that I was subtly right, and she was always wrong. <laughs> and now, and now, we don't even, we're not even arguing. We're just discussing our different points and our different ideas about something and we were talking about truth telling and so she thought that there's a time to 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 not to just or no we're talking about helping people helping people and that there's Mm. just a time her her perspective was there's just a time where you help someone okay and my perspective was was i don't want to give help to anyone that i'm not genuinely feeling that i want to help and so she said well sometimes just friends ask and you just have to say, oh, no, I disagree. And I'd much rather want to help than not want to help, blah, blah. So we discuss our merits on that. There's no trace of animosity, right? We're just talking and hearing each other out and enjoying us kind of breaking down, like, what we're really thinking about a certain issue about this thing, you know, social norms, et cetera. And, and then I get pissed off, dude. I'm like... Wait, I haven't fucking heard a word from dad. And so I was like, dad, what, you know, what the fuck do you think? And I, and I speak this way now, too, in front of them. I'm not, I, I'm not afraid to cuss in front of them and, and use vulgar language because it, it's, it, it's, it's emphasizing that I think this is important when I, when I say fuck or whatever, when I use this kind of language. It's, it's, I'm being serious about it. So I ask him, you know, what the fuck do you think about this, dude? I mean, here you're just listening to us and you're not contributing a goddamn thing. Like, what's the deal? And I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm expressing that I'm pissed off that he's not saying it, what he actually thinks. And so we unearth this, this old trauma, dude, that, 
that used to that stemmed from arguments when I was younger. And it's just me and my parents. I'm an only child, for those that don't know. And my dad had a certain traumatic issue a few times where if he sided with me, then my mom would be pissed at him, thinking that he's siding with me all the time. And then if he sided with her, I'd I'd be upset with him. And like, dude, are you serious? You really think that? Are you being truthful? And so he was caught in a double bind and couldn't win either way. And so the only thing he knew was to shut the fuck up and not have an opinion about anything. And so we sat there and we worked it out and we made an agreement as a family that this is done. We're putting this beside us. We each have our own opinions about things. And sometimes they're going to match up with someone else in the party, someone Mm. else on the team, that we're all a team. Us three want the same thing, to express love, to be honest, to, to grow deeper in our connection with each other as a family. We all want the same goddamn thing. So we're giving up the team thing now. You're never on my team, mom. I'm never on your team, dad. Mom, dad, you're never on each other's team. We're all on the same fucking team. And sometimes we have different opinions about each other. Do we all agree on that? Do we all understand that? Yes. All right, good. Now let's move on. Wow. And it was fucking beautiful, David. I'm just... It's mind-boggling that I'm having these types of experiences now when... uh, I don't know. They're just... It's just so great. It's like it's like I didn't know I was carrying all of this weight and didn't know that my dad or my mom or you were carrying all this weight. And now we have some sort of superpower with our language and our mm-hmm. awareness to be able to work through it and help free each other and ourselves of the weight. So I feel pretty heroic right now. And... I'm wanting some recognition from all of your viewers about it. <laughs> Y'all hear it? Y'all hear it here? Yo, leave, my Instagram is wing.shake.roll. <laughs> you, can, you can watch me spit in truth, you know, whenever you want. No, but yeah. Dude, it, it's, it's true, though, man. Like, it does feel good to, when people reach out and say that they listened and found it useful, but man like you're doing it dude that's and i think this is big like this isn't this isn't just like a cool thing you're doing like this is uh this is profound actually and i i really do mean that and because i see that this this is like the leading edge of of society and in the way that we should be having conversations in the way and not to say like there's a should and there's a higher high no. like a moral high ground it's, it's or anything it's the way like, that you want though it's the way that you want to have conversations dude it's the way i want right, to have right 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 okay this is yeah and i but i and i also want to see that reflected in everyone else at the same time like i yeah me too man i want to have these conversations with any old fucker off the street i want this i want this to be a new norm where we move past our 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 stories and our heritage and and learn from it but move forward into new territory and quit spinning our wheels in place and and create be the creators that mm-hmm. I think we're here to be man mm. and oh, that's what I'm really excited about and dude I thank you for saying that this is profound because mm-hmm. that that to me I I value your opinion. There are not many opinions that I do value, but your opinion I value. And that's high praise coming from you, brother. I really appreciate that. That means something. I'm getting getting, like teary eyed (laughs) thinking about it. And just the the connection that even I'm able to have across Skype. Uh, I love you, man. I do. I care for you a lot right now in this moment. I love you too, man. I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, man. And I, I do mean that. Like, I really do. Like, yeah, just we're doing it. We're doing it. You're doing it. I'm doing it. 
Dude, and I'm scared, man. I'm scared of doing it sometimes because I have these great connections with people like you mm-hmm. and, and and Alex and others. And but the stakes get higher, man. Like the more I'm doing it, yeah. the more I'm scared that I might lose I might lose you. That 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 I'll reach a point oh that that okay, well shit. David does not resonating with this anymore. Like he he stopped moving. And I'm scared of those that I care for not progressing with me. And I'm scared of those that I care for moving beyond me and not remembering me and forgetting about me. Um, mm. I, I'm, I'm anxious about that. And like in these moments when I feel like very grateful and I'm caring about you and I'm looking in your deep blue, beautiful eyes <laughs> and I'm like, God damn, I love this guy. I love this guy. Like in that moment, I'm like, oh shit, I'm, I'm scared of losing it too. Like mm-hmm. in that moment, the fear is with it too. That oh, sh- you know, the attachment. Oh man, I want to just hold on to this feeling that I have for you all the time. But I know sometimes I'm pissed off at you, man. And we've been through this. We've been through the ups and downs. And yeah, just yeah. The deeper I go into this, ah. Uh, the the more palpable the fear is the more real the love is though the more mm-hmm. authentic my gratitude is and it's like everything is more vivid and vibrant the deeper i go into truth telling and mm-hmm. i'm i'm wanting that more than a dulled version of the fear or a dulled version of the love i'd rather feel the fear full on in its full power and the love in its full power than some bastardized, diluted, watered-down, bitch-ass version of it. Because I don't want to be no bitch-ass in this world, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to be? Not a bitch-ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to be someone that I'm proud to be. I want to be someone that that is adaptable in the moment. That 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 is like walking and talking truth that is the exact thing that needs to happen for the momentum to continue forward. I want to be the grease of the wheels. I want to be the person that you aspire to be. I want to be the person you're jealous of. I want to be the leader. And and to someone, I want to be able to be afraid and I want to be soft and gentle and and cry and and be held in someone's arms and and be funny in the wrong moments and be an asshole in light moments i want to just allow whatever me is to to just arise without without stopping it god that sounded good <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, <laughs> that was poetry, bro. Oh <laughs> my god. Uh, you should write a book, bro. I, I know. I'm so envious that you've written a book and that you're writing a book. I have no discipline to sit down and write a book. I, I yeah, want you that do. story to dissolve. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do, man. I <sighs> I mean, I yeah. think whether you like it or not, you'll be writing a book one day. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll just get I've, so bored. I'm like, all right, I'll write a book. All right, it's <laughs> finally time. Yeah, man. Oh, but that's good. Then I might be the worst writer. You might be a better writer than oh, me. Oh, shut up. <laughs> where shut where up. is <laughs> now? It's still a question mark. There's still. Well, he might be a better writer. He could be. <laughs> but it, <laughs> if he never tries, who knows? You never know. But if I try it, oh, God, then I'm really risking it, huh? Ooh, yeah. Oh, dude, this, oh, is, this is – I made a video about, like, start how to start writing a book on YouTube. And, like, I remember one thing I said was, like, it doesn't – and I really do believe this. Like, it doesn't matter how good you write or, like, how good you say something. It matters – what you're saying and what you're talking about like it doesn't the subject of what you're talking about it's the subject and the direction and what you're pointing that matters most not like 
how flowery and how elegantly you word things. Yes. And with your with your like with your mind and your being of like so focused on truth telling and so focused on being vulnerable, that's it. Like that's what yeah. writing is. That's it. You're right. You're absolutely right. And I, I see it in the way you write and the way that you express yourselves. And oh my God, dude, I'm I'm listening to this book right now called The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Mm. And it's an yeah. American classical novel. It's a classical novel. I've read his other books. So, yeah, I'm wanting you to know that my first, like, run-in with John Steinbeck. But, <laughs> we got but a dude, this book. Here. Yeah. I, I, I even feel ashamed sometimes of saying, yeah, I listened to that book. Oh, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like, as if you didn't I didn't read it. You listened. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't sit down and read it. You're right. Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> Anyways, but this book, it's 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 expressing exact it's exempl it's exemplifying exactly what you're talking about. That John Steinbeck and the characters he has in this book, they're not they're not refined, articulate, educated characters. They're hillbillies, mm. and they speak in such a way that is so wise. And so refreshing. And the audiobook is narrated just impeccably. It's 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 incredible. I'm sitting there laughing and crying with these things that they're saying. It's mm. and then his description, his description, the flowery language comes in in the description in setting up the stage and yes. and bringing me. And you've told me this before. Don't tell them where they are show them where they mm, are yeah and he does it so beautifully and the, oh i'm just i'm blown away by this book and want everyone to read it and i want everyone to listen to it actually because it's exactly the way that i want to be able to tell the truth in mm. such plain words i don't want to beat around it in just plain words i mean the characters in this book aren't thinking about what they're saying they're just saying it because it's based on what's happening within them. It's beautiful. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I feel like I'm on mushrooms right now. I'm <laughs> vibrating from the inside out. And mm. I'm, I'm alive. I feel alive. And... I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the position I've set myself to be in. Even small things like being in a place that I feel comfortable raising my voice and allowing my voice to be the exact tone and pitch that it needs to be in alignment with whatever's happening within me. Mm. And I often feel I'm often constraining myself when I'm indoors or when I'm around other people. And I'm grateful for this space happening between you and I right now because the more I can practice it and be comfortable with it happening, the more I take that out into the situations that I'm less comfortable in. But I can reach a new threshold of discomfort and acceptance of that discomfort every time. And I hope it's I hope you're getting as much out of this as I'm getting out of this. Oh man. <clears throat> yeah, bro. Yeah. I am. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's wonderful. It's like yeah. It's just really really refreshing to have these, to see you, to see you, and to have these conversations. Um, yeah. I just. I yeah. I, I don't have these types of conversations with anyone, with anyone else, really, and. Yeah, it just it makes my life more meaningful. So thank you, man. Mm. Thank you. I also feel just yeah, I feel just something. Something I I like. Something I want more. <laughs> <I'm feeling. laughs> did, yeah, you, man. did you think about um any any names? Uh did, oh, were there dude. any 
I was thinking you know what? real boys. Yeah. Or mad real man bo- boys, real boy. So real boys. What, what we're what we're referring to is like a, a group name for you, me, and for you, me, and Scold. So like uh, for marketing purposes or something. So it'd be, but dude, uh, now 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 I need I, I need to see Alex's real side, dude. If he's gonna be a real boy <laughs> or a man boy, boy <laughs> yeah. I'm calling you out, bro. I'm calling you out. Let's get past the bullshit, man. Let's get past it. All right, you heard it here. We're gonna have to do this again next month, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's cool, right. Man. Um. Again. God damn, we're almost at three hours. <laughs> yeah. If if anyone's still listening, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um. I think I can speak for the both of us and say, oh, you know, we hope this was useful for you. I hope you got something out of this. If you've spent this much time listening and man, yeah, this is, this is what it's like. This is what it's like to have for me, at least when I feel like I'm having like a deep, good conversation with someone, something that's really like, and I leave feeling energized and like a new sense of, um inspiration and like and on it you know what i also feel after leaving is like a small amount of like depression actually is like coming down from it and that's one thing i've learned from doing these things man especially with you guys it's like and especially with you is like after after this is over it, it's over and like you know you go back you go i go back into the real world and um it does feel like this different dimension, this different space that I'm stepping into and entering into. And I'm wanting to carry that. I'm wanting to continue to carry. And then I feel like this is practice. This is practice for me to get into that space. And Mm -hmm. so I want to thank you for providing the opportunity Mm -hmm. for, for us, for me to be able to get into that space and, and carry this on dude. Cause man, like, conversations like this they're like a little light and you know you we like i'm like holding the candle and even though like the flame the the winds are blowing out here the winds are blowing and it's cold i got my little candle dude and (laughs) this little candle's taking me places shine bright this little light of mine (laughs) I'm gonna let, let it, it shine. shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it let shine. It. Um, yes, I know. Which I, I think I understand. Yeah, that depression after. I'm almost at a. I, I like after I, I get so alive. I'm like, all right, now the, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> I'm like, all right, I think this is where I need to be. Actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man dude but the invite is there man you are welcome to haul your ass to ecuador and, and come on down man it's there and so i guess i'm i'm approaching future plans for me mm-hmm. i don't know where i'm gonna be um i'm gonna be here for some time though i'm on free visa time right now so i'm enjoying it here i've got a wonderful setup and I'll just be here growing and doing the damn thing. I wish I could share. I, I wish I was more patient with the technology I have. Mm-hmm. I, I think I would share more if I had more than this piece of shit iPhone 6. So, yeah, it sucks that my computer doesn't work and that I don't feel comfortable spending the amount of money that it takes to fix it because I, I'm stingy with the money that I have. I mean, I'll just put it this way: that <laughs> stimulus package like tripled my net worth. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting stimulus. for you, Donald. Let's keep it going. So, <laughs> Let's keep... so, if you want to support me in any way, any of your listeners, the easiest thing you could do is is just shoot me a message or comment on the the podcast itself. I I just love knowing that it's affecting people and I like um, hearing from people. And if you want like more one-on-one help, then then I'm going to charge your ass because my 
time is valuable <laughs> and so is yours. And that's just the way it is. But I, I do like hearing from people that get something out of this. And if you think it's bullshit, you can tell me that too. There you go. Well, thank you, Bradley, man. Again, I deeply appreciate you coming on and giving this much time to like just talking. It it really does mean a lot to me. And that's one thing that I've discovered by doing these podcasts is like, you know, people are busy. People are busy. I don't know what they're doing. You know, they don't, they wouldn't give, not, not a lot of people would give this much time. And I think this is, you know, what's kind of set you on your path and me on my path is like, we value time and we're willing to trade yeah. that for money. And, um, again, yeah. yeah and, and just, I, go ahead. Well, it's not just money, but just also, you know, I'm, I'm wanting compensation from you. I'm wanting you to, to, to put the product out there and to, to share it. And I'm going to be getting value of that. It's, I mean, I do that. There's, I mean, I'm selfish too. I'm wanting, I'd be, I think I'd be sad if this, you know, this, this material just got pumped into the trash bin and it wasn't shared and, and I didn't get attention from it and I didn't get, um, challenged from it and that I, you know, mm. that all of these things that are going to be coming from urine now, um, totally. I'm, I'm hoping that that meets what I'm wanting. Um, cause that wasn't exactly clear. Like we weren't clear on what each of us were expecting from this, what each of us were wanting from it. So, mm, yeah. And I, there's enough of a history between you and I that if I was to feel resentment for some reason, then I would tell you and we'd work it out from there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm giving my time because I'm wanting to share it and think I have something valuable to share. And I'm also wanting the attention. I'm wanting, I'm wanting this to lead to possibly a livelihood. I'm wanting yeah. my vulnerability to be valued so much that that it's it's presence alone and the power to spark others' vulnerability is is useful um, to mm -hmm. a point that I can even support myself with it or feel more comfortable being in somewhat of a financial limbo. Um, so yeah, it's it's complicated. And I feel better just about saying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I think we're all selfish. Like, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to spread the content and share this and I'm wanting for people to hear it and listen and give it, give it their attention and interact with it and comment and like and right. subscribe <laughs> and follow and, <laughs> and like, <laughs> Make me famous, bro. Be my Joe Rogan. <laughs> Dude, honestly, like, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not even about being famous. Like, I don't want to be famous for fame's sake. I don't want, I just, what is it that I want? Dude, I want to be fucking useful. I want to be fucking useful mm, to the world. Right, right. Become good at something. Like, become good at talking oh. or become good at being vulnerable. Oh, right. Ooh, like these are these yeah, are what we have to I'm share. Wanting, right? Yes. And so yes, this, I'm wanting to master it. This Fuck is the yes. product. This is the product of the yes. service. Is that? Yes. Yeah. This, <clears throat> is, it. this is it. So yeah, yeah, man. I'm I'm willing yeah. to to do my part to be to to share and to spread this this podcast and this message, man. So I stay think, tuned. Dude, that's what we're wanting that's what we're wanting and those of those the people that are resonating the truth tellers wanting to communicate it better wanting to understand themselves they'll listen to this listen to it so yeah well i thought we'd make the three hour mark but i guess we'll, <laughs> we'll fall short of it just a little it works for me man well, i love you man i'm i'm wanting to pee and eat some watermelon and move on. All right, let's move on, brother. It was good to speak with uh, you. I love you too. And uh, we'll be you. in touch. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please consider following.